Joe Rogan has over 70 episodes that have been completely removed from the internet by Spotify. In this video, we uncover the reasons behind why each episode was taken down, including one guest who has over 15 episodes completely removed. We also found the most common reason for why episodes had to be deleted. Stay tuned until the end to find out. And let's start with the most recent episode to be removed, Chris D'Elia. Let's start with the most recent episode to be taken down, which was episode 1458, with Chris Delia in April 2020. Joe has had Chris Delia in two more times previously being episodes 980 and 533, both of which were also removed. Chris is a stand-up comedian and actor who was friends with big names in the podcast comedy scene, such as Joe Rogan, Brendan Schaub, and Brian Callen. He was a successful and relatively popular name in the Hollywood and internet world. However, in June 2020, allegations emerged of Chris Dahlia sexually harassing multiple underage girls. He did give a statement denying these allegations. However, he also admitted that he had a sex problem. I, I, dude, if I ever make it back into Hollywood, which, you know, you haven't seen real until I get back into Hollywood. These allegations were right before Joe Rogan's move to Spotify in December 2020, and consequently, none of the three episodes were moved over to Spotify. As I'm watching this happen, I don't know what to think, and I don't know what to say. I don't. Um, but I have, I'm gonna say it again, I have personally never heard or seen him do anything illegal. That's all I can say, and right now I have to believe that. Legal information around the case was never released, however, Chris Delia was never convicted and still posts regularly on his YouTube channel named Super Good, which has nearly 600k subscribers. However, Chris Delia was blacklisted in Hollywood after the allegations, completely putting his acting career on halt and losing his popularity on social media. There's also speculation if Joe Rogan and his friends in the podcast scene knew about Delia's activities as they did seem close. Since this incident, Joe has not mentioned anything about this apart from when Theo Vaughn made a remark about the situation in a recent episode. Huh, that extra 12 months makes a big difference. If you're 20 and she's 17, people will get very upset with you. Even in places where it's legal, where, where it is legal in a few places, which is kind of weird. Yeah, and if you are weird. 35 and she's 17, you can't be a comedian anymore. I'll no. tell you that. Uh, are you sure? I don't, you know, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I who know. knows, bro? Who knows? I don't know. Alex Jones. The next most recent episode to be banned is from the infamous Alex Jones with episode 1255 and 911, with Eddie Bravo both being banned. Alex Jones is the host of Infowars, a radio show based around conspiracy theories, with his appearances on Joe Rogan setting the internet alight. I'm kind of. <laughs> The episodes still remain on YouTube as they are all very popular. Alex Jones is an extremely controversial figure and has always battled deplatforming. However, he's also a very popular figure. Episode 1255 has 33 million views, being the fifth most viewed JRE episode on YouTube. Moreover, there is some validity to some of Alex Jones' claims, such as when he predicted the Twin Tower explosions. We know the government's planning terrorism. We know Oklahoma City and World Trade Center was terrorism. We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners, Baltimore Sun. If you do it, we're going to blame you because we know who's up to it. Or if you let some terrorist group do it, like the World Trade Center, we know who to blame. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden who was a known CIA asset in the 80s. I did two and a half hours specifically saying they're going to blow up the World Trade Center, call the White House, tell them don't blow up the World Trade Center. Or when he uncovered a satanic cult. Alex Jones, he's, he's made some mistakes and some big ones, but he's also actually exposed some real shit. And he owns up to the mistakes he's made. They're not good. He doesn't think they're good. The, there's a thing about finding conspiracies everywhere that's not good for your brain. I really believe this. I think that if you go looking for those things and that's all you look for and you look for them all the time, you can get real paranoid and real crazy. And then there's also a bunch of people that are trying to stop you from doing that because you do expose some crazy shit. Yeah. You know, he was talking about Epstein a long time ago. I know. A long time ago. He was saying there is a fucking island and, the, and they take all these rich politicians and, and some celebrities and they bang these kids. And I was like, come on. He was telling me this a long time ago. 
However, it seemed he could not win the battle in court surrounding his statements about the Sandy Hook shooting, and as a result, was cancelled. It seems that Spotify didn't want to completely remove Alex Jones because he is too popular, but at the same time, he's too hot and controversial for Spotify to allow all the episodes on the platform. Hence, they decided to remove two out of three of the episodes. Owen Benjamin then we have the episodes with Owen Benjamin, which include episode 1093 with Kurt Metzger, released in March 2018, as well as episodes 1033 and 998. Owen Benjamin is a conspiracy theorist, actor, and stand-up comedian who also more recently has become a cult leader for something called Bear Taria, which we will get into in a minute. Owen was first cancelled and blacklisted in Hollywood in 2017 after he disagreed with a prominent figure in Hollywood who said it was fine for their three-year-old son to transition to a girl and planned on giving him hormone-changing therapy. However, soon after he began to go on a free speech crusade and essentially tried to be as offensive as possible on Twitter and other social media platforms. This led to Joe Rogan staging an intervention in which he told Owen Benjamin to chill on Twitter. I wanted to talk to you about social media. Okay. Because I, I love you. I, I love think, you too. I think you're a very good guy. I really do. But you are the worst representative of yourself on social media. I'm a bad it's, warrior it's, it's myself. A, it's a bad form of getting out tricky ideas. It's a bad form. It's just right. not good. You know, you have to really think about what you're saying. However, this ultimately fell on deaf ears, and in May 2019, Owen Benjamin was banned from Twitter and also demonetized and restricted on YouTube, and hence when Joe moved to Spotify in 2020, none of the episodes with Owen Benjamin were moved over. He also started to really go after Joe Rogan, and it seems like he's honestly gone insane. How can you follow Joe Rogan? He's five foot six. What leader? If I was standing in front of Joe Rogan, I would think he disappeared. I would be like, where's my friend Joe Rogan? And someone would be like, way down there. I'd be like, where? No, like men are right here. Like, where's Joe Rogan? He currently is a cult leader for Bear Taria, as mentioned, which seems to have its own compound and is hosting his own musical festival. The cult seems to be based around flat earth, anti-government, and crazy conspiracy theories. Here's a clip of Joe Rogan talking about his friend was gone insane and is very likely talking about Owen Benjamin. When did we give Owen? What did he give Owen? Oh, I think just one. He ruined his but life. It would have been about 200 to 250. Yeah, million. yeah. Oh Last thing I heard that the podcast, you say like 250. He opened the door and went out. Uh, Joey made a video, but the, the, the day changed Owen's life. Like, literally, f the guy's head up. Like, yeah. he went outside and he vanished. He's gone. Owen, we feeling all right? Rumble yeah, I'm just gonna get some air. Yeah, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking crazy high though. Okay, you want this me to? You want more, more water? Yeah. Okay, nice. let's do some water. Yeah, you just oh, relax. Man. This is the devil here tonight. Get some air right there. Get some air in the back room. And take your water with you just in case you fucking, uh, you know, you want to dehydrate a little bit. You'll be all right. This happens. This day, I had to do a thousand things. Little stupid. <laughs> he abandoned shit. Sargon of Akkad. Carl Benjamin, better known as Sargon of Akkad, is a large political YouTuber with nearly 900k subscribers whose views to most would be considered right wing and extreme. Sargon of Akkad appeared on Joe Rogan in June 2017. He was a popular figure on Twitter and YouTube for expressing his political views. He is British and a member of the UKIP party, as well as being very anti-feminist from which he gained a lot of attention. One month after his appearance on the podcast in July 2017, Sargon of Akkad was banned from Twitter for a range of reasons, but the main ones being tweeting interracial gay p-hub to white nationalists to annoy them, as well as calling someone Jewish slurs. He would also go on to say, I wouldn't even R-word you to a British female politician for the Labour Party, who was making a statement that R-word threats were common for her. I think we should treat women the same as men. And that means if a woman is being a giant bitch, I'm gonna be a giant dick back to her. Any questions? The question for UKIP's leader, will this plan work? Why would moderate Leave voters back a party like this, someone who stands on a ticket as a comedian who says that it's okay to say, I wouldn't even rap a Labour MP. There's lots of grown-up people out there in the general population who are going to say, oh, do you know, I think that bloke said something really stupid. 
Uh, but by the way, 90% of the rest of the stuff that he says is quite simple, sensible, so it's not a bad idea to actually vote for him. This, as you can imagine, was received with a lot of backlash, and he was not only banned from Twitter, but also Patreon. Due to this deplatforming, Sargon of Akkad's episodes were never added to the Spotify library in 2020. However, interestingly, Sargon of Akkad still regularly uploads on his YouTube channel, as well as having been reinstated on Twitter in late 2022. Gavin McInnes Here we have another interesting story. Gavin McInnes was on two episodes on the JRE podcast, the first time in October 2015, and then again in February 2017. At the time, he was famous for co-founding Vice back in 1994 and posting provocative political videos on his YouTube channel. In 2016, Gavin then co-founded the infamous right-wing, male-only group called The Proud Boys. The history of The Proud Boys, which is what ultimately got Gavin McInnes cancelled, is in this clip explained by Anthony Cumia, one of Gavin's good friends, who was also on the JRE podcast. Well, listen. We were talking about this last time I was with you. Right. The Proud Boys. Yeah, yeah, Started Gavin. off as a goof and then became like what the... I mean, they won't let him in Australia now. Have you seen that? No, it's it's gotten insane. Yeah. Like, Gavin is considered uh, like a war criminal at yeah. this point. Explain yeah. how it all started because people don't know. So we have uh, we had this employee, uh, Ben Ratner. He, Rat never talked about girls. He's like this really Jewish... Real red hair, kind of gangly, you know, kid, and uh, he he liked going to Broadway shows and things, and we always questioned his sexuality and whatnot. And uh, Gavin really started hitting on him, going, "What are you doing? Like, get laid. A kid your age should be out there. You're just fucking plowing through pussy." So he goofed on him about that, and then said, "We ought to make a club called the Proud Boys, and that way you can learn how to be a man." And, you know, you, you, you'll get chicks and tattoos and, you know, drink beer and hang out with guys. As a joke, it was like this parody of a men's club. And slowly this fucking thing mutated into something. It got more members. Uh, they started wearing, um, what are those shirts the, with the yellow piping on the collar? And so it's a specific shirt that became the uniform, Perry Ellis. So they started getting together at bars, you know, in the area in Manhattan. And, and how is this organized? Is this organized through his Compound Media show? Through the Compound Media show so and was... his own Twitter account and, and Facebook, which he subsequently lost. But that's how it started. And it never was supposed to go any further than that. This whole thing with uh, politics got involved because Antifa, which is anti-fascist, started uh, uh, coming into uh, conservatives that wanted to, to speak. So Gavin was a conservative, is a conservative. He'd get uh, speaking engagements at schools and Antifa would show up to protest him and try to shut down the event. So then the Proud Boys would go and protect Gavin. So then it turned into this because they're fighting with Antifa, they must be the Fa, the fascists, right. the Nazis. Um, and once that gets out there, there's no pulling it back. Consequently, as the Proud Boys grew and Gavin was labeled as one of their leaders, who was completely deplatformed in 2018. Gavin resigned from the Proud Boys in 2018, realizing he had gotten out of control, but the damage was already done. And in 2020, when Joe Rogan moved over to Spotify, both episodes were not moved over to the platform. Milo Yiannopoulos Milo Yiannopoulos began as a journalist and gained traction working for the far-right website called The Brett Bart News. Milo was first banned from Twitter in July 2016 for multiple reasons explained by the Twitter execs on the JRE podcast. He also uh, docked someone. He posted um, private information about an individual. So that was the second one. Mm -hmm. He tweeted to somebody else, um, if you were my child, I'd have dashed your head on a rock and tried again, which we viewed as a threat. And then the last one, we found um, a bunch of things that he posted that we viewed as incitement of uh, abuse against Leslie Jones. The reason for Milo receiving large backlash outside of his standard right-wing views was when he said often that sex with 13-year-olds can be beneficial for gays in early 2017, which Milo did later apologize for. 
However, following this, he had to resign from his position with the Breitbart News and consequently has become a lot less relevant in political conversation due to this in combination with his ban on Twitter. And so it was no surprise when in 2020, when Joe Rogan moved to Spotify, the Milo Yiannopoulos episodes were not transferred over. Kip Anderson, Keegan Kuhn, producers of Conspiracy. The next removed episode is an interesting and different case. It is episode 750, released in January 2016, with Kip Anderson and Keegan Kuhn, who are producers on the Netflix documentary called Cowspiracy. The problem here, no one wants to talk about it, because they're, they're membership organizations, you know, a lot of them. We uh, need to address that as well. You, you better take that camera and throw it away. Cowspiracy is about how the government and environmental organizations are blaming the climate change problems mainly on fossil fuels and are not mentioning the huge problems caused by agriculture and overfishing. Now, as you might imagine, this is not controversial like many of the other removed episodes. The reason for this episode being taken down is more unclear than the other previous episodes mentioned. Here are a few theories. Number one. You go full conspiracy theorist and say that Spotify did not want to promote vegetarianism because they are in bed with the meat industry. Now this, in my opinion, is unlikely because there are other episodes on Joe Rogan that promote vegetarianism and also the documentary is still on Netflix. So it's not like this documentary has been removed from the internet. Number two is that Joe found out information regarding the documentary and decided it was more a vegetarian propaganda documentary rather than a factual accurate documentary and so he wanted to remove the episode to stop spreading false information. The last and least interesting theory is that Netflix asked Spotify to remove the episode based on copyright claims. Clips were shown through the podcast and therefore copyright could be a problem. Spotify likely don't want to deal with any legal drama. Charles C. Johnson. Next is Charles C. Johnson. Now, if you search for him on YouTube, there is very limited information surrounding this guy. He featured on JRE in April 2015 and is an investigative journalist and author who also goes by the name of Chuck Johnson on the internet. On the Joe Rogan Reddit, there seemed to be a lot of dislike for Charles C. Johnson, and this episode in general, as well as it alleged receiving a 50 to 50 dislike to like ratio at the time. However, there is no way to prove this as not only did YouTube remove the dislike ratio on videos, but this video, including all JRE podcast episodes without 1 million views, were removed from YouTube when the podcast moved over to Spotify. Despite this, we did find some clips from the podcast on an alternative website that illustrates why this episode potentially was so hated. That like cops are evil, that they're predatory, that they're dangerous. And it's obvious like why the Obama administration is pushing it because they get these consent decrees in where they can basically rewrite the policing rules and essentially take over the policing departments. Like there's this whole debate about the MAOA gene, which is like this gene that um, black American, you know, black, uh, you know, Africans have like much, it's like a proclivity to violence that they have. M-A-O-A gene. Yeah. God, right. is that really true though? I mean, you, you look at all the violence and murder and death that's been done by the military and you think about how many people involved in the military sure. are white and how many people making decisions are white. I mean, ultimately that's white people causing violence. Charles C. Johnson, like almost everyone on this list, has been banned on Twitter. He was banned in 2015 after tweets to raise money to take out a BLM activist called DeRay McKesson. He did sue against his Twitter ban in 2018, saying it went against his First Amendment right, but he ultimately lost the case and remained banned. In 2017, he would also receive a lot of backlash following his statements on a Reddit, Ask Me Anything, in which he said, I do not and never have believed the 6 million figure referring to the number of Jews killed in the Holocaust, and also would say he did not believe that Auschwitz and the gas chambers were real, hence being labeled a Holocaust denier. It seems to be a combination of these controversies, on top of his general right-wing statements and his statements in the podcast itself, such as the ones mentioned that led to Spotify not moving his episode over in 2020. David Seaman David Seaman has had the most episodes removed by far, with seven episodes not being added to the Spotify library as we go further down the rabbit hole and we uncover more older videos that have been removed, it becomes very hard to find information about these guests. 
For example, you will find no actual clips from this podcast on the official JRE Clips channel, despite David Seaman being on seven times. Regardless, David Seaman was a journalist and writer covering mainly on topics such as technology, finance, and news. However, in 2016, after his appearances on JRE, David Seaman gained a lot of publicity for promoting the Pizzagate conspiracy theory. Pizzagate was a conspiracy theory that emerged during the 2016 political election that a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. was the center of a sex trafficking ring involving high-ranking officials, especially members of the Democratic Party. This online theory culminated in December 2016 when an armed individual began firing shots inside the pizzeria but found no evidence of criminal activity. From there, it was widely debunked and deemed to be completely false. However, as mentioned, David Seaman widely promoted this conspiracy theory and you could say banning all seven episodes, maybe they were trying to hide something, but I'll leave that to your imagination. Stefan Molyneux this is a unique case because Stefan Molyneux has one episode that was removed from the Spotify playlist. Stefan Molyneux is a philosopher and ex-YouTuber whose channel in June 2020, which nearly had a million subscribers, was deleted. This was the second largest YouTube channel to be deleted at the time after Alex Jones. Here's Stefan talking on the Chris Williamson podcast about his YouTube channel being terminated. Interestingly, this episode with Chris Williamson was also taken down on YouTube, but remains up on Spotify. Tell us, tell us uh, what's happened over the last week. Well, um, so there's been sort of a successive deplatforming-ish kind of stuff that's been going on with me and YouTube. It goes back to a year ago, February, uh, right after I um, criticized censorship at the European Union. Um, I ended up being vanished out of, I think, suggested videos, promoted videos. They took my most popular video, the story of your enslavement, and made it like adult content so it couldn't show up in the searches and you had to be logged in and all that. And that cut traffic quite a bit. Um, what did I, you I'm say? the kind of guy go, go like. To that. What did you say? You just criticized. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I, was, I was just criticizing the. Um, uh, the sort of ongoing censorship issues that were occurring on social media platforms. After listening to the podcast, here are the two main controversial topics that were discussed in the episode. The first is Joe Rogan questioning Stefan about his anarchist beliefs. It's not good philosophy to have a universal called the non-aggression principle, which you and I and this fine fellow here and the listeners, we all accept, right? We're, right? we're all here voluntarily. You don't force anyone to come to your shows. I don't force anyone to listen to what I do. So we all accept that at our personal level. And that's what we teach our kids, right? Yeah, don't hit, don't take mm -hmm. other people's stuff, don't push, you know, that kind of stuff. The government is just people. How do they get this get out of jail free card where they can do stuff that is specifically illegal for the private citizens, like print money, like take out debts on behalf of other people? You and I can't do that. I can't go buy a car and send you the bill. Uh, and they can invade countries. They can uh, force people to pay for things. Uh, they can incarcerate huge numbers of people largely on a whim. They can tell people who are doing things like drugs, which is a purely voluntary form of enjoyment and self-medication. They can throw them in jail. Uh, I can't do that. You can't do that. If I'm going to pay for my kids' education, I don't get to walk up and down the street with a machete saying pay or die. I mean, but this is the way that we've set up or the way we've inherited society. Sorry, I don't want to go on too big a rant. No, but, but it's a good rant. It's, that is, that it's a good point. Secondly, Joe questions him around his misogynist claims, in particular that women are responsible for crazy men as the women choose to breed with these males. But you said some stuff uh, about women that I have even disagreed with. And one of them, you did this thing recently where you're talking about how the way to get assholes out of society, it's women's responsibility. Because women are breeding with these assholes and they're making it's assholes. It's not only women's responsibility, right. but it's a key part of the equation that uh, I think is not discussed enough, which the is word, the sexual choices of women. That expression, though, or that, that, that sentence is really critical. But the reality is, I think, and I think this is, you know, somewhat debatable, I think it's fairly well established that... Uh, in general, men ask women out and women say yes or no. And I'm saying to women, one of the ways that women can incredibly contribute to reducing the cycle of violence is to choose better men. Because there's a part of women, and again, this is fairly well established, at least as well as these things can be established, there's a part of women that likes the alpha guy. And, and I get that. I mean, men are attracted to particular physical 
things which Im indicate fertility, and women are attracted to particular male traits that indicate good provider. Mm. And again, there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's perfectly natural. But the reality is that we do need to be wise in who we choose to raise our kids with and who we choose to have kids with. Interestingly, however, Stefan Molyneux regarding this particular episode would later say that he felt that Joe Rogan ambushed him on this episode. Well, I did two really enjoyable shows with Joe. One was just in a hotel room, and then the other one was down in his studio, where he fed me bulletproof coffee until my eyeballs rotated. And it re really enjoyed them, liked him a lot. And then, I don't know exactly what happened, but my, my guess is something like this. So, uh, he apparently is friends with Anna Kasparian, <laughs> and... Um, uh, from from the young young Turks, and I did a video criticizing something Anna Kasparian did, and then I think Joe went on a show with Anna Kasparian, and then Joe invited me down, and you know it was kind of like an ambush. He dug up every negative thing that he could find about me, and and uh, you know it was one of these like uh, hey you know. <laughs> Right. However, it is also important to mention that one of the main points of controversy around Stefan Molyneux is that he discusses the relationship between IQ and ethnicity. This topic was not discussed in the deleted JRE episode, however it likely does also add to the reasoning behind the ban and censorship placed upon Stefan Molyneux on social media. The US Army, for over 100 years, has been giving more or less IQ tests to people to figure out whether they're sort of officer material or, you know, grunt material, so to speak. And what they noticed was between blacks and whites, and this becomes this bichromatic nonsense because the, the question of ethnicity and IQ is a whole layer cake. You know, just very briefly, the, the, the very top, the Ashkenazi Jews. And then under that, you have, I don't know, the word Orientals kind of come out of favor, which is kind of annoying in a way because how do you differentiate people from India, people from sort of East Asians, whatever, the Chinese, Japanese, and so on. Uh, 103, 104, 105 uh, IQ in general. You've got uh, your run-of-the-mill vanilla Caucasians coming in at 100. And 100 is just, I don't know, it's just the, the baseline. They recalibrate it from time to time and so on. And then uh, below, I, I did some of this, I, I, what are mestizos or, or uh, Hispanics sometimes called, although that's a very loosey-goosey term, and uh, that's sort of 85, 90, and so on. And then you've got uh, blacks uh, in, in uh, North America, uh, particularly uh, African Americans, coming in at, at, at 85, and there's been some upward drift a little bit. Uh, and then uh, below that, you start to get uh, sub-Saharan blacks at 70. There are uh, pygmies at, uh, in the high 50s, low 60s. There are um, the uh, indigenous people of Australia, I think, in the low 60s. And some of these numbers, again, I don't have them all tattooed on my you know, yeah. wrist or anything. But So there is this range. It is unbelievably heartbreaking. I mean, just, just I'm straight up about all of this. Like, this is one of the most difficult facts I've ever had to absorb in my life. Furthermore, it is likely that those two topics discussed in the removed episode, especially when you look at Spotify's general stance with the previous removal of episodes, would indicate that this was enough for Spotify to remove this episode. Bert Kreischer. He's been on the show 36 times, yet his appearance in episode 525 in July 2014 is the only episode he has been involved in to be removed from Spotify. However, to explain the theory to why this episode was removed, first we must move ahead in the timeline to two episodes, with Dave Asprey, who we will first discuss as both his appearances on JRE have been removed from Spotify, and his story potentially relates to the reasoning behind the removal of the episode in 2014 with Bert Kreischer. Dave Asprey Dave Asprey is well known as being one of the founders of the term biohacking and the founder of the company Bulletproof, which sells biohacking products. Dave Asprey's first appearance was based on his pioneering of butter and high fats in coffee on it. The company Joe Rogan co-founded even began selling this coffee, called Bulletproof Coffee, on their website. However, problems began to arise after Dave Asprey's second appearance, in which Tite Fletcher, who is the founder of another coffee company, Caveman Coffee Co., and a very good friend of Joe Rogan, is also a guest on the podcast. First, Dr. Rhonda Patrick addressed it in episode 459 in February 2014 about Dave Asprey claiming false information, and then Joe Rogan went on to explain the issue around Asprey's claim about all coffee having microtoxins. Uh, here's the issue. Um, 
this guy is selling coffee and now we're selling this coffee through on it that was uh, supposed to be the cure to this issue so his his contention was that 70 plus percent whatever it was of all coffee is infected with mycotoxins and they make you sick they make the coffee taste bitter they make you taste bad you know they make you feel bad I took too much of this at face value and parroted a lot of the things that he said and then we decided to start looking into it ourselves well they've known about mycotoxins in coffee for a long time there's a PubMed study from 1980 about mm -hmm. mycotoxins in coffee it's always been an issue but they've been able to resolve that issue with wet processing. Uh, wet processing, the, they know how good coffee providers know how to eliminate this from coffee. We tested four random coffees, well, two random, one Starbucks, one random bag from Whole Foods, uh, one coffee that we sell, which is the upgraded coffee that Dave produces, which is good coffee, good single source coffee, and another one called Caveman Coffee. None of them tested positive for mycotoxins. And so, well, if 70% of all co coffee has mycotoxins, we had three bags other than the upgraded coffee, none of them are taking his upgraded, quote unquote, bulletproof process, which he won't result, you know, he won't reveal what this process is publicly. And so I, I kind of feel like it might, there's some bullshit. Then going full circle to the Burt Kreischer episode, Joe went in again on Dave Asprey regarding the mycotoxins in coffee. So what, Asprey was telling us was that his coffee was uniquely free of mycotoxins and that mycotoxins were would give people headaches, mycotoxins would cause you to crash, all these all these different things he was attributing to mycotoxins. And he was even saying that point being, here's the point. He had no tests. He wasn't showing us anything. Like like he was saying that all these different coffees have mycotoxins, it's a real issue, no one talks about it. But when you start reading about it online, you I found out that this wasn't an issue at all. Like this paints the picture of the fractured relationship that formed between Joe and Dave Asprey. Moreover, it is supported by the fact that Onnit no longer sells any bulletproof products on their website. Now, due to this fallout between Dave Asprey and Joe Rogan, it is likely the reason for both episodes being taken down is that Joe didn't want to spread misinformation supporting a product, which is claiming benefits that is not scientifically proven. Moreover, it could also be that Dave Asprey wanted to have the Burt Kreischer episode removed to protect his brand and reputation. That is somewhat of a long shot of a reason why the Burt Kreischer episode was removed, but it is interesting how Joe went in hard on Dave Asprey in that episode and that now it is removed. Louis Theroux This episode was another big one to be removed from Spotify. Here we are talking about Louis Theroux's first appearance, episode 463 in March 2014, However, his second appearance in August 2016 is still up on Spotify as well as YouTube with 14 million views. Louis Thoreau is a filmmaker, journalist, and broadcaster best known for his documentaries in the television series Louis Thoreau's Weird Weekends, which is when Louis explored various subcultures in the USA, and when Louis met, which is when Louis would embed himself and extensively interview and document famous people such as Jimmy Savile or boxer Chris Eubank. There are two theories behind why this episode was removed. The first and more likely one is that during the podcast, they played a load of clips from Thoreau's documentaries, with much of the rights being owned by the BBC and not Thoreau. Hence, the BBC likely got the episode removed based on copyright. The second and far more interesting but less likely reason is the conspiracy route. First, they spoke about Jimmy Savile and Jerry Sandusky. Followed that whole thing about that one guy who was that famous talk show host. Jimmy Savile? Yes. Wow. That is fucking crazy. That guy was a pedophile, and apparently for decades, and it was covered up, much like the Jerry Sandusky case in America. For a lot of folks are aware of that, the Pennsylvania State, uh, the guy who was a coach, a football coach, who was a, just a massive pedophile, and they covered it up. They covered it up so much, so I don't know if you, you're familiar with that case, but the DA, the guy who was a, the prosecutor, was trying to try to find out information. He turned up missing. He turned up missing and they found his laptop in a river with no hard drive. The second conspiracy ripe topic discussed was the JFK assassination and the Zaputra film. He explained why he believes there were multiple shooters. Uh, Zaputra, uh, and it's the execution of President Kennedy. I've totally never seen that before. With really? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. You've never seen a Zapruder film? Uh, just like the bits they showed in JFK, you know, the Oliver Stone film. Oh, yeah. 
I had never, I'd never seen, I don't think they showed that bit. Finally, they discussed Ted Nugent, who is a famous musician and political activist. Ted Nugent has also faced allegations of sexual activities with underage girls. One of the guys they questioned in connection with threats to the president was Ted Nugent. Did you know that? Question with it was actually for statements that he'd made I about Obama. He got a yeah about Obama. Yeah. He got a visit from the Secret Service. Yeah, he said that he would wind up in jail if uh, if Obama was uh, elected again. Jail, well, and someone... that was construed as a threat. Yeah, and I they think, visited yeah. him because I made a program about. He's another guy I, I did. A, when I, I started out working in TV with Michael Moore, uh, he gave me my break on TV, and I worked on a show called TV Nation. And one of the early segments was with Ted Nugent. I've always had a sort of fascination with the far right. Yeah, he's a very fascinating guy on the far right, on the far right because there's been so much bizarre shit in his past. You know, like he adopted some 17 year old girl or became a legal custody took legal custody of her so he could have sex with her is that right yeah, his parents allowed it or I, her parents i didn't know it. that yeah therefore it could be theorized that tant nugent wanted this episode removed in order to protect his reputation those are just a few of the potential conspiracy reasons why the episode was taken down ultimately we do not know I will leave it up to your own personal judgment. War Machine Jonathan Paul Copenhaver, but more commonly known as War Machine, was a former professional MMA fighter who was on episode 454 back in February 2014. The reason why this episode was removed is dark. You read this fucking thing today, this kid got charged with 29 felonies. What did he do? He's the one that beat up the, the porn star, you know. Oh, oh, oh the, the, what they call him the war, war machine. War. Ultimately, I feel that clip explains almost everything you need to know. He's sentenced to life, and it is no surprise why the episode was removed. Brian Dunning. This episode has been deemed to be the most hated Joe Rogan guest. Brian Dunning is a writer and producer who focuses on science and skepticism. Brian Dunning, a few years before going on the JRE podcast, wrote an article called The Celebrities Who Promote Harmful Pseudoscience and Put Joe on That List. Consequently, on the podcast, Joe and Brian really got into it, with the episode turning into a long argument. The worst part is that he promotes these ideas to the public at every interview opportunity, but gives himself the intellectual get-out-of-jail-free card of not needing any evidence by hiding behind the childish debate technique of saying, hey, I'm just the guy asking questions. God, this makes me sound like an asshole. Well, it's just factually inaccurate on so many different levels. I don't understand why you wrote it like that. Like, th there's things that you said that I believe that I don't, that I've never said that I do. What I'm willing to do is look stupid. And by talking about things and saying, that looks like a controlled demolition, I know that puts you in the, the nutter camp, but I'm not saying it's a controlled demolition. But I say that not being willing to debate it and being insecure to discuss it rather, not debate it, but to discuss the reality of what you're viewing is silly. It's preposterous. It doesn't mean I'm promoting the idea that 9-11 was an inside job or that it was a plot by the government. I don't think that. I've never thought that. This episode is just seen as a bit of a train wreck online, and hence, it is likely that Joe just wanted Spotify to remove this episode instead of usually where Spotify tells Joe what episodes they are removing. A quick side note, the reason why all these episodes were first removed was because Joe moved exclusively to Spotify in May 2020 in a $200 million deal. Since the inception of Joe's podcast in 2009, individuals' usage of the internet has dramatically been censored. Consequently, Joe has been caught up in countless scandals for older episodes, which caused Daniel Eck and his team to review all of Joe's previous JRE episodes, before allowing it onto his platform. This deal expired at the end of 2023, and Joe is rumored to have signed a new $250 million deal with Spotify. However, apparently this new deal means Joe's podcast is no longer exclusive to Spotify, and the full episodes can now be posted on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. Anyways, let's dive back into why these episodes were deleted. Dr. Stephen Greer He's a big-time alien conspiracy guy with some huge claims. Actually, this ET I'm talking about is probably mm -hmm. about four to five feet tall. I didn't know what the heck was going on, uh, and I was up on this mountain, in uh, 
outside Boone, North Carolina, up in the mountains. And this, at first I thought it was a deer on its hind legs looking at me. And because it had uh, deer-like eyes. And it came over and touched my right shoulder so hard, firmly I could see the indentation. Dr. Greer dedicated his life to alien research and revealing it to the public. He went on Joe Rogan only once. One of the things that might have also got their attention was uh, Operation Starfish Prime. Are you aware of that from 1962 where they launched a nuclear bomb into space? <laughs> <laughs> they well, blew up a nuclear bomb in space. Well, I, actually, one of our witnesses, Colonel Diedrichson, was with the uh, Atomic Energy Commission, which became the DOE, and he was an Air Force colonel. And his responsibility was over all the nuclear facilities, but he knew of a program where we were going to lob a thermonuclear weapon and detonate it on the moon. And when that, okay, and they actually worked on this, and when it went exo-atmospheric, when it left our atmosphere, and, and it was intercepted by an extraterrestrial vehicle and basically dematerialized, was taken out. And he knew had personal knowledge of this. So, so they, they had actually tried to do this. They, they actually launched it, and it was on its way to the moon. Now, since this episode, Greer and his discourse project have not released any significant evidence, and many people consider him crazy, and Joe might be one. Therefore, because Joe didn't want to spread misinformation, he removed the episode. However, the alternative theory behind this episode being taken down is a juicy conspiracy. The powers at B want to silence Greer as he knows too much. The episode with Joe contained no slurs or copyright issues. Moreover, there is another example of this happening. It was supposed to be a, yeah, but it was supposed to be a show a, on Sci-Fi Channel, an interview show where I'd interviewed everybody, you know, uh, uh, all the people in the, in the field of cryptozoology and that, and, and, and sci-fi and, and, and science fiction and theory and UFOs. And I had Stephen Greer and Stephen Bassett on that same day. I've had Stephen Greer on the yeah. show too. Okay, so I interview Stephen Bassett. I'm about to interview Greer and I get a call at, in about like noon at our noon break and they call and they say your show's canceled we want you out of the studio by the end of the day and uh we're not going to air anything that you've done Which Stephen dude? Greer Stephen Bassett Stephen Greer the UFO show it gets canceled that day now maybe Ms. Hammer made a decision you know talk shows aren't really our thing or Ackroyd's not really what we want on our network or I don't know. Was she called by someone, or what? what why? Why, they... why that day when I was going to do this vivid, you know, UFO uh, show uh, that was going to go out on, on the on the air eventually? Why? Why then did it get canceled? Well, how are the ratings? Puzzling. How are the ratings? Well, no, we never got we never got to air. I did twenty six of them, and we oh. never got to air. It never got to air. No. Another Dr. Greer interview that was completely censored. And did you notice how hesitant Joe was when it was brought up too? Interestingly, Dr. Stephen Greer would also give his take on the episode being taken down. Like when Joe Rogan says, oh yes, I can talk about free speech. To make his deal with Spotify, the, the show I did with Joe Rogan, forcibly by the corporate entity, had to be taken out. It is not in the lineup. You have to find it elsewhere. Adam Kokesh. Adam Kokesh is a former soldier who served during the Iraq War back in 2004 and since has caused a lot of controversy, mainly around gun law. He runs a YouTube channel with over 250,000 subscribers, where he publicly expresses his strong views. He did the same back on his one and only appearance on Joe Rogan. We will not be silent. We will not obey. We will not allow our government to destroy our humanity. We are the final American revolution. See you next Independence Day. He was arrested shortly after this back in 2013, but not only for possession of a firearm, but also for an illicit drug. The combination of this and his constant promotion of guns caused him to be banned on other social media platforms too. For example, he ran a counter protest against anti-gun laws. This is Adam versus the man here in Washington DC for the million moms for gun control march. I'm a gun owner. Let's talk. We had a counter protest and they, oh. uh, they moved us a hundred yards over there and they put a guard. Uh, well, we'll see about it. that. I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't follow unconstitutional orders. Despite him keeping his YouTube channel, he was shadow banned and he hasn't uploaded in over a year. Eddie Bravo. Next up, we have Eddie Bravo. Now, despite him being the second most common guest appearing 88 times on the Joe Rogan experience, one of his earlier appearances in episode 213 was deleted from YouTube. Like most of Eddie's appearances, 
It is a funny and entertaining episode. One story they covered was a suspect roleplay Eddie Bravo used to do. For people who don't know, Eddie is... Eddie and I have been friends for a long time, and one time, before I knew Eddie, I would have advised him against doing this. <laughs> <laughs> he made a video, and he made a video of him playing a rapper that wears, actually wears blackface. <laughs> and yeah. it was, the concept's really, it's, it was pretty funny about it, but people got really mad at you. People got really mad. Explain the concept. The concept was that this guy was pretending that he had vitiligo and that he was just, he had to cover his whole body. Just like Michael Black, Jackson. Yeah, just like Michael Jackson. So he had a, he was just, the makeup was just to balance out the real color of his skin because he's really black. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. But he has like total black face. Yeah, so he's wearing like black, I mean, it's ridiculous. And he's, he had an Afro wig on, right? You had an Afro wig? Yeah, yeah. well, um, the characters, like he curled his hair. It wasn't a wig. He's just curled his hair and he's only wearing black you, makeup. When you, when you did it, did you curl your hair? Oh, no, 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 I wore a wig. Yeah. However, this episode was taken down because of a story Joe shared about Joey Diaz. One time at the goddamn comedy store, Joey Diaz, and this is in front of a mixed audience. It's not just, he's talking about some defensive line and some strategy in football that was a night of a thousand <laughs> <laughs> And he's saying this on stage in front of a, a, a mixed crowd. Joey Diaz is Whoa. crazy. On this topic, you can really see Joe's evolution in this next clip. Yeah, I think Joey being, you know, 100% Cuban, I think a super Latin guy with that New York flavor, Oh yeah, he can get away you can with say N I G G A. Yeah. I think yeah. black people let him say Are you that. really spelling it out instead of saying it? Dude, I don't want people coming after me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's become the new Muhammad. You, Quatu can't, you Quatu can't even draw a picture Quatu of it. wouldn't even say that. He uh, ne Quatuf never said N-I-G-G-A. Wow. I won't go there. Wow, that's amazing. What a powerful word. Brody Stevens. Brody Stevens was a stand-up comedian that unfortunately passed away back in 2019. He had two appearances on the Joe Rogan Experience. Only his first was deleted. This podcast starts off on a highly carnal topic. Guy use a vibrator on a woman or is that, or a dildo or is that like demeaning? Is that I like- I don't feel that you should ever bring tools into the equation. Try out a Hitachi first though. Always go in strong. No, the problem is man, you, you introduce that shit and you've, you've basically set a bar that you can't, you can't hit that bar on your own. You're bringing in machinery and shit. Show you guys with high that. RPMs and batteries and if no, what kind of an unnatural thing is that? You're hitting her with a lawnmower, man. I mean, what are you doing? You're, you're trying to vibrate her into stimulation, like, supernaturally, in a way that would never happen in nature. So now you're going to get this crazy freak addicted to sticking vibrating machines into her body to make herself come. If a girl can't get off when you eat her she's broken and you don't want her around. So okay? eating uh, orals, okay. Yeah. If you can yeah. yeah, I'm orals good at that. Fantastic. I'm good at that. Orals, talk, great. If you, don't, talk. if you don't eat... There's something wrong with you. Why would you not want to do that? It feels great. It feels great for the girl. It tastes good. It yeah. tastes good. Flavor. It's like positive. olives. It's exciting. It is. Positive energy. I love it. Yeah. Not only were these comments bad considering the modern day feminist movement, but Joe would also drop this later on. It's almost impossible to insult the average comedian. Right. You know, if you have a bunch of us and you came into a room and there was a bunch of us, you pretty much feel like you could say whatever you wanted. Yeah. But isn't it one of the beautiful things about being a comic? Like when you would go to the comedy store and, and pull into the back, you step out of your car, you could scream the N word at the top of yeah. your lungs and we, and we would just go, what's up, Brody? You could say whatever you want. Yeah, you could just, you know, you could just, hello. And we would just Whoa, go well, I did not, come on. I we saying, that if he paper, said somebody, that, if he said stopped, that, I'm saying, me. I'm not saying it. I'm saying if he said that, we would have no problem with it. You could say the most ridiculous thing ever because we, comedians, for the most part, are almost impossible to, to insult like that. Brian Callen and Jimmy Burke. This episode is with two regulars, Brian Callen and Brian Redban, along with Jimmy Burke, who is an interesting character who does not even own a mobile phone. Many years after this initial episode, Joe and Callan would later reflect on this podcast and talk about Jimmy. He's the closest thing to a monk. I was just with him. I, I flew him down to Florida. Do you remember the time I just we had him on the podcast, him. folks? You want to watch a disaster of so podcast? High. We got him way too high. Oh, God. We got him like three or four hits deep and he doesn't smoke weed. And he hadn't eaten. He hadn't eaten. And he was thirsty. I don't think the, if eating helps when you're smoking it. Yeah. I might be wrong. Does it? I well, he was already so. low blood sugar and he hadn't slept. We barbecued that dude. Yeah. We, we threw him in a Traeger grill and set 
set it set it two twenty five for six hours. He was forgetting stories in the middle of the I, first sentence. He's amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, we fucked him up, which yeah. is too bad because he tells some great stories. Now the world will forever know him as the guy who couldn't keep it together. Well, while Jimmy was explaining why he doesn't have a cell phone, he would leak this, which showed just how high he was. Just think, we had what so much fun you in New York. your leg and we, you need someone to come get you. Well, well, uh, it, it, you know what, Joe? What if it hasn't you arisen? Call somebody that you like. Well, that's that's good. That's good. I I, I have a now have a po I have a pocket full of quarters, and there's always what? A, where is there a, a goddamn payphone? They're still there. The you gotta pigeon. know. You gotta know where they are. You gotta know where they are. Messenger pigeon yeah. is not So you now. remember people's yeah. phone numbers? That's Absolutely. Do you, I know like three phone do you get, numbers. Do you get leads? Brian's get Brian's phone number is three one zero four. Hey, you fucking dummy! He doesn't realize how many people are listening. Jesus Christ! I dude. was just proving, uh, but there's a mic in front of I was oh, just. you ought to change your voicemail so that people don't know that that's your real that's number. True. It is no surprise that this episode was quickly removed following that. Joey Diaz. I'm going to assume that most of you know Joey Diaz, and I am also sure that you probably thought he would make it onto this list at some point. Joey has two banned episodes from the podcast, both of which are over a decade old. The more recent episode that was removed was from episode 128, which had hilarious moments such as this one. We got, we got down, Joe Diaz. We went deep. Okay, we just kept smoking. We just fucking smoked. This didn't do shit to me. What? You gotta break out the yay weed when I come up here, dog. What are you talking that about? Right, that weed we just smoked. Don't do shit to me. If you make me drive 40 minutes up here, you gotta get me stoned, bro. That Susquehanna weed, I've been telling you about that shit. Yeah, you brought that to the ice house too. That don't do nothing to you. You're so crazy. It's you, true. You need to go to a doctor. What the f dog? You, you gotta need to bring go to some a, strong you need to go to a doctor. Weed, what are you talking that about? That shit don't it do nothing strong. to you, dog. You gotta bust out some good weed, dog. Enough is enough with this. Shit. Wait, it's the, the best. Around like Jack it's Herrera, the best and weed you, you can buy. Weed. No, it's not. Look at my f***ing eyes. Do I look high to you, guy? Yeah, you look high as fuck. Because I I smoked on the way. Because I knew you were gonna give me that Susquehanna weed. Joey. You, you better start getting some good weed, You gave him dog. that Hannah Montana weed. Yeah, yeah. that's the fucking weed you about, give me. Dude. That's the second time in a. Oh. Yo, dude, you God just smoked train death. wreck. That's it was garbage. They that sold you on garbage. it. Look at my you eyes. So crazy. That's garbage. You better You're start getting so some crazy. strong fucking weed. Okay, a little Joey, different story. Relax. I love you, relax. I love you too. I love you. Got to go to a doctor. Damn, you always hit me with this badass weed, and then you talk shit. You got strong. What the fuck are you smoking? Look at me. What broken? Joey. I'm broken. What you hit me with this what are you talking terrible about? weed. Let's do this, bro. Joey, We're right. here, motherfucker. Brian, Uncle hold Joey's on. Here. Brian, how high are you right now? <laughs> uh, bro, he gets high, high on a right? toenail. You... And this only escalated. You invite me to your home and you give me the Susquehanna weed. I, I what the f I is a Susquehanna? Me. What a what the fuck are you talking Remember about? Remember those Susquehanna hat companies? No. Madeline Costello, those cheap fucking hats. What? The team here. Anyway, what f***ing planet are you from? You're f***ing smoking that shit weed. Shut the, the f*** up, up will you? I'm talking about the goddamn thing I did this weekend. Oh, okay. I didn't know you were talking about that shit weed. You just barked. You are so f***ed <laughs> up. Fuck, look at my eyes. Dude. Yeah, that's not. That's what it is. It's not that you weigh 300 pounds fuck. and you smoke pot all day, every day. That's what... Well, blame it that's on not what it is. Blame it on my it's fat. Just, there's something on that's my weed. Do it. Blame it, it on my it's, fat. It's not no. fat. It's the no, physical size of your body. Weed. No, you're crazy. You go to that same Best store, weed you can get. Yeah, I, I go to other stores. I go to other stores. Get the f out of here. That's the second time, dog. He is Don't so shit fucking weed. whiny I love and you complaining. Today. He's so yeah, whiny and complaining. He's so, He's so brody. You're so brody. This is Joey. Shit on my bad weed. Joey, please shut the f up, man. This is a goddamn you. podcast. You've been complaining for five fucking minutes about because weed. You're telling me that what's Susquehanna? You know what Susquehanna is. I don't know what Susquehanna is. No more fucking late night podcasts for Joey. <laughs> no more. Anyways, back to why this episode was taken down. With Joe's N-word controversy in mind, I would not be surprised if this comment from the first minute of the episode was why it was removed. We're finna go do this podcast. Some guy uh, tweeted me saying he doesn't like when I do a black voice. And to him, I say tough shit. I'm gonna have to deal with that. If there wasn't people that actually talked like that, you know, if I was doing that white guy voice that Richard Pryor always did, that never bothered me. He's like, hey there, Mr. So, oh, Mr. Pryor, my, my mom, why, she's a great old gal. I guess there are a few people that talk like that, but there's a lot of mother who talk like my black voice, okay? It's not like you have to go find them, like, gee gollicky, gee whiz, gee whizzer maker. No, there's a lot of dudes 
will be like, we finna do this podcast. That's not even ridiculous. That sounds exactly what a lot of black people sound like. But for whatever f***ing reason, man, black people are so super sensitive about just a little good-natured joking around. But what definitely was the nail in the coffin was this story about Joe Rogan and his friend who were high and their experience when they went to the movies. So I go, you gotta go to uh, one where there's Planet of the Apes, man. We're gonna go see Planet of the Apes. So I look on the iPhone app, and it says, okay, take me to this one. And the guy goes, okay. I go, is that in a good neighborhood? He's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Guy barely speaks English. He takes us there. We get out, and we're giggling. Oh, we're gonna go see Planet of the Apes. We walk into Planet of the Apes. <laughs> we walked into Africa, dude. We, we, we walked in the door, and there was no white people. There was no white people. We, Planet of the Apes didn't take place in Africa. Just, that was a racist thing for me to say. But you see what I'm saying. This clip was later dug up many years later, and Joe was nearly canceled for it. He would reply with this statement online. There's another clip that I have to address. There's a clip from 11 years ago. I was telling a story on the podcast about how me and my friend Tommy and his girlfriend, we got really high, we were in Philadelphia, and we went to go see Planet of the Apes. And we didn't know where we were going, we just got dropped off by a cab, and we got dropped off in this all black neighborhood. And I was trying to make the story entertaining, and I said, we got out, and it was like we were in Africa. It's like we were in Planet of the Apes. I did not, nor would I ever say that black people are apes, but it sure can sounded like that. Moving on, the second removed Joey Diaz appearance is episode 108. The reasoning is similar to why the first episode was removed, but this time it is Joey Diaz who nearly got cancelled for his comments instead of Rogan, with Joey explaining what he would make women do in order to perform at the comedy club. Uh, She's lucky she paid 100. I had girls sucking my dick and giving me coke from Chewy. You think I'm kidding you? Yeah, you gotta suck my dick up in the belly room. I'm gonna make a call for you. That's the, that's the gateway into coming to Hollywood. Everybody knows that. How many girls did you have to do that? Oh, 20 of them. I had, <laughs> yeah. I had this little blonde open mic chick dog that used to come up to the comedy store with a 20 and just take me up to the belly room and suck my dick and go do her set. She was tremendous. Wow. She finally freaked out. When she got to Hollywood, bro, she was beautiful. And when she left, she had dirty her nails were dirty. And then a year later, she wrote me a letter to the comedy store. You sucker, you broke me. <laughs> <laughs> I kept shooting balls in a in 2020, people picked up on this comment and tried to cancel Joey, which is why the episode was removed. Joey would quickly respond to the cancellation attempts with this video, which is appropriately titled, Wanted, Dead or Alive. That podcast was taped in 2010 before we knew podcasts were going to go anywhere. Who the f*** knew they were going to go anywhere? Like, there's a girl down there in 97. I knew her. I knew her very well. She had been lurking around there and she wanted stage time or whatever and it was one time she asked me i would suck it i thought it was a f joke i even walked into the payphone that used to be at the bottom of the original and made believe i was calling mitzi and hung up the phone and listen it was a mistake then i knew it whatever i talked about it now you guys want to get mad at a guy for laughing? I don't know. I don't know what law and order you fucking watch, but they never arrested nobody for fucking laughing, okay? And there's nothing in the Constitution that gets you in trouble for laughing. We laugh. I see a guy in a wheelchair fall, I laugh. That's my crazy sense of humor. So everybody has a different sense of humor. You motherfuckers listen to SNL and, oh my God, go f yourself. They never said a funny fucking thing, but now you want to fucking attack this new style of comedy now i'm not responsible for what anybody else did i'm responsible for my actions jamie kilstein jamie kilstein is another stand-up comedian he is also a writer and radio host for citizen radio who is an infamous left-wing feminist he's made it to the joe rogan experience three times but his first appearance back in 2013 was deleted uh well citizen radio we started it i mean i'm assuming for the same reason you started uh your show which is we just felt like you know, the mainstream media not only wasn't covering a lot of the stories that they should be covering, but that they weren't kind of speaking to, you know, the disenfranchised or the poor or the young or minorities. They were just, you know, speaking for a bunch of David Brooks clones. And we met uh, a lot of people on the road who were our age and wanted to learn more about politics. 
But every time they tried to watch the news, they were like, I'm either being lied to or talked down to, or maybe they weren't educated enough. His reputation as a feminist came back to bite him not too long after this. Also in this next clip, he looks completely different. Years after all this, I guess what happened was one of these girls um, essentially started to try to find any girl who has been pissed off by me before. And they found enough for an article that um, I think like two articles came out. Um, I left Citizen Radio because the show was getting a ton of complaints um, because our inner circle started to find out that there were quote unquote accusations, which the word accusation makes it sound Weinstein-y. Um, accusations of so that's what it, so this they, is, they were saying but there was it was very unspecific what I read they said predatory behavior yeah. and I was like oh meaning he's trying to get laid that's what a man does like he, not predatory in the sense of you're victimizing someone no. or someone or no. doing something horrible to someone or even and this is when my own words kind of bit me in the ass because you I spent an entire year uh, or years being like, you know, uh, hashtag believe women. And then you read that and you go, ah, hashtag don't believe women. Like you don't know what to right. do. And like, I, I, I was always like, if you call a girl who accuses you, uh, uh, you know, crazy, you're just projecting and like, you're trying right. to, and then suddenly I'm reading this article. I'm like, this is crazy. However, before he was kicked off the citizen radio show and divorced from his wife, the reason his appearance on JRE was deleted was because they got into a sensitive topic pretty deep. If you are that sensitive, you do not belong in a comedy club if you if the word will send you into a fucking panic I feel unfortunate I feel sad for you you are very unfortunate that this has happened to you maybe a comedy club is not the best place for you maybe you should go somewhere else sure. where it is in a 100% uncensored it, ride through the mind and imagination of Daniel Tosh that's not PTSD shit I'm like you can't if somebody gets a she didn't say in her blog that she was she no. said in her blog that she felt offended that he would joke around about rape. No, I was talking about. Uh, I was you were saying about PTSD. What's no, so the hypothetical? Doesn't no, I, work I was on saying, her. let's say that girl was. Look, if that girl did write that in her blog, it'd be a totally different blog. Okay, but you're but saying survivor when he made a joke. She's not a survivor, man. No, I'm saying in the audience. Anyone. But she's the victim. She's the person who got said that word What about word the audience too? right now of this yeah. podcast? Considering how touchy a topic this was, it's no wonder when Joe moved to Spotify, they wanted this episode to be gone to save from future backlash. Ari Shafir. Ari Shafir is another regular on the podcast with over 65 appearances. However, two of his earlier episodes have both been removed. First is episode 118. Now, this is the only time Joe has explicitly described the abuse he received and others from his father. All my damage came from my real father. And all before the, you were seven? Yeah, before I was seven. That's all the damaging my father was. My real father was crazy. He was like a psychotic person. Really? Yeah, he was he beat the f out of my mother. Like he would be the type to come he home Got my, my cousin. Dinner. Really? Yeah, yeah, he beat my cousin up. He picked my cousin up by his hair, dude. Drunk was, and doing it? Or no, just, no, 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 no. My cousin had done something. He had hurt somebody. He was playing hard and hurt somebody. And he was a bigger kid. He was like 16. Yeah. And my dad picked him up by his hair. I'll wow. never forget. Threw him in. He was a big guy. Big, scary, crazy cop from New Jersey. Wow. Yeah. So that was all my from when I was like real young. I got to see, I got to see worst case scenario. Someone who just can't keep it together, smacks women, uh -huh. beats the shit out of kids, beats the shit out of them. Now, many years later, Joe Rogan's biological father, whom Joe was talking about in this clip, would respond to these comments. Joe, I don't know where you're getting all this stuff from. Picked my cousin's son up by the head of the hair, knocked him out, did this, beat up ladies. It's not right to be one-sided, Joe. There's two sides to a story. And you never heard mine. I'm really not the bad guy. I gave you 25 plus years. Give me 25 minutes. That's all. I'll meet you halfway. I'll go anywhere and meet you. Look in my face when I'm talking to you and tell me I'm lying. But I know you're lying. This is important for why this episode has been removed, because Joe Rogan's father and his daughter, who is Joe's stepsister, would say in an interview that they took legal action against Joe, hence why episode 118 was removed. And he sent them a, what was it, a cease? We um, sent Joe a cease and desist letter from further defaming my father. And what happened with that? Joe has not spoken of my father since. 
The earlier episode of Ari was removed for very different reasons. The conversation first started off getting into slightly risky territory. There's something very special about poor white people that act like poor black people. Mm. There's a weirdness to it, man. And it's like when they're rappers. serious, when like white dudes are like real serious about being street and acting black. Yeah, but like, is it just a poor thing? No, no, not necessarily. I mean, a little bit of it, sure. I mean, because their world interacts, you know, they're, they're intertwined, you know, the communities. Yeah. The poor white and poor black communities. I mean, there's something weird when a dude has a clear affectation. Huh. You know, he just takes it on. And all of a sudden, you know, it's like, he won't get crazy. You know, you won't get crazy. And you're like, I've seen white guys talk like that. And you're like, wow. Okay, there's no part of the country yeah. where white people talk like this. But then Joe would say this. We will censor it due to monetization issues. And also keep in mind that Joe has since apologized for these comments. Especially like involved in like when I was playing pool and I was going watching guys gamble on pool. There was always a lot of like these sort of thug type characters who were white guys that talked like black guys that it would even say they would say like this you think you gonna come here and take all our shit like, this this you think you gonna come here and take all our shit show this motherfucker who's up show this motherfucker. and be like wow like wow. this guy's it's like an alien person like you you're, you're not just saying these but things russell peters and junior simpson russell peters and junior simpson are both stand-up comedians and actors they both appeared on the podcast in episode 116 but this has since been taken down Russell Peters has four other appearances on the podcast. Contrary to this, Junior Simpson has not been seen since. This is also reflective of their comedy careers, where Russell Peters can be seen on YouTube with millions of views. She's giving me the best wrist job I've ever had in my life. Like, I didn't know you could do that with a wrist. <laughs> I went back to my hotel room that night because it felt so good, I, was, I thought I'd give it a shot, you know? <laughs> Sitting at the edge of my bed, I'm like, all right. Whereas Junior Simpson is lucky to get a thousand. This is a direction my sat nav gave me. In 300 yards, turn right. <laughs> I got paranoid. I thought to myself, how has my life become that now my sat nav is calling me names, hey? Right? Why this episode was deleted is pretty self-explanatory. I had a, a bit in one of my last CDs about there's three magic words, uh, love and and here is the only one that black people are only allowed to say. And it, it is some weird thing, but if you say it, people feel like they are allowed to hit you. Like they're allowed to physically, there's very few words that are that strong. Where if you say it in front of someone, not even calling them someone, mm. just say, boy, there's a lot of around here mm. they will jump on you and beat the f out of you i don't even like that the word correct. i don't even like the word nigger because it's only one letter away from a fight you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah so. right well how about niggardly you know <laughs> that that's is, a that's, that's a an actual word for, in the it's like stingy or fr <laughs> it's like frugal right about, or something yeah. like that what about nigeria neil brennan if you're a joe rogan fan then you're likely familiar with neil brennan he's appeared 11 times on the joe rogan podcast most recently in april 2024 he is best known for his work with Dave Chappelle and his own stand-up comedian career. Think about it, following us around everywhere we go. Just because of the color of our skin, killing our cousins for no reason. And then when I tell my black friends that the sun killed my cousin, they're like, well, what was he wearing? I'm like, this episode was again Joe's fault, who dropped this while talking about the Tracy Morgan cancellation. Like if we were standing around, if we were sitting in my office and you, and I said, well, what about if you had a gay son? And you'd be like, I'll stab that little n I would start yeah. laughing of my course. ass off. Of course you would. Well, that's the other <laughs> and thing. And if Tracy Morgan was here yeah. and he started standing, I'll stab that little yo, yo, yo. And guess what? If he said that in front of a different crowd, you know, one crowd would laugh hilariously. Brian Posehn. Brian Posehn is a well-known comedian and actor. If you have not seen him before, then you may have heard his voice in The Big Bang Theory, Adventure Time, or American Dad as a voice actor. His one and only appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience was deleted due to Joe's wild comments in this episode. They're like dogs, but they're a lot smarter. Don't they you too? Love it. Love it. On the internet. Look, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll everyone needs to a little bit if you don't have any hands, you know? They have flippers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't just do rely they, on someone's like kindness. One, is there one rape dolphin or, or do they <laughs> rape they all? Or rape. Do they like, they're all eager. Bang bang you like the, the well, couple like one of them like hey look over there and then 
that you look and then the other one comes in. And Dolphins are particularly ruthless when it comes to breeding females because breeding females, when they have babies, they won't mate for a bunch of years afterwards while the kid's growing up. Right. So male dolphins will kill the babies to force the women to fuck again. So one Jesus. of the yeah yeah so yeah people don't tell you about that when they tell you how oh dolphins are green <laughs> they're eco. <laughs> Cliffy B and Johnny Cristo. Cliff Blazinski, aka Cliffy B, is best known for his contributions to producing the video game Gears of War and his experience being the former design director for Epic Games. Johnny Cristo played in the popular band The Escape Club. Cliffy B appeared two other times on the podcast before his episode with Johnny Cristo, who only appeared in episode 112 that was taken down. The reason for this is becoming a common one. I'm going to be better off if there weren't words like this that are so f***ing super hypercharged. I don't think we need to let new words in. I yeah. think, you know, like people that, that are start screaming that all of a sudden uh, midget is just like saying Nick. Yeah. You know, oh, come on. Relax what with are we the doing? power you yeah, get to words. Yeah, exactly. And, and why does everything have to be, you know, just like, it's just like saying <laughs> Every f***ing word yeah. is like, just like saying You know, midget is just like saying Nick. F*** it is just like saying yeah. Like, I, I have heard so many versions of that. Cunt is just like saying yeah. No, it wasn't. You know why? Because nobody owned cunts. Cunt is the Nick equivalent to... Exactly. <laughs> and Exactly. It, and you know what? It's it's a different thing. Yeah. You know, like the, 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 everybody wants to say it's like because the most offensive thing. Yeah. It's a dehumanizing thing. They just keep going and going, no, this is the most offensive yeah. thing. You can't to me. add things. You can't add things to the banned list. It just tells you so much about an, a person by how much power they ascribe to irrelevancy. You know? Duncan Trussell. He is another regular on the podcast. Interestingly, Duncan Trussell was also the guest for the longest JRE episode, which was over five hours long, when both Joe and Duncan got high out of their minds. Three of his appearances have been removed. The first one is self-explanatory. Eddie Griffin explained to me how Bruce Lee died once. He told me, he talked to me for like 20 minutes. He came in the room and there was a hundred other motherfuckers in this room. <laughs> and Bruce Lee looked at all them and said, which one of y'all want to die first <laughs> and then they all came at him and they could not get close enough because his feet and his hands was moving so fast these bitches was just dropping left and right but they had to kill they had to kill him with poison not too much to be said there in the next episode with duncan trussell that was removed they did open it up like this all day all they continue to head bop to this song for the next opening minute of the podcast, so a copyright issue resulting in the episode being taken down is possible. However, the more likely reason is Duncan Trussell who dropped this instead of Joe this time around. Alright, hit me with it. So it goes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, okay. Hare Rama. Hari Dama. Hari Rama. Hari Rama. Rama Rama. Rama Rama. Hari Hari. Hari Hari. So it goes Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Rama Rama, Hari Hari. I'm not going to remember that. I got lost at the fourth Hari Krishna. Oh, here's an easier one. Here's another mantra, which is a is a good one. It's just Ram. Ram. R-A-M. So go Ram. 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 If you didn't catch it, rewind it. The reason behind the third and final Duncan Trussell episode to be removed is actually not race related. Just kidding, it is. Again, Joe is referencing Eddie Griffin's Bruce Lee story. Ever yeah. told you the how Bruce Lee died story? No. Bruce Lee fought a thousand <laughs> I'll tell you this, this crazy thing. I mean, like, he was standing there and he took about 900 of them out until one finally got the death touch on his ass. Oh, death he touch. Will, he, will, he will tell a a tale. Eddie Griffin would be the perfect guy to hang out with drunk in a pool hall yes. on like a Friday night and he's talking. Joe really does love that Bruce Lee story. Doug Benson. Doug Benson is a 61 year old stand up comedian who runs a YouTube channel with over 400,000 subscribers and is a regular on the podcast. However, his second episode on the podcast was taken down. 
This clip just sums up how wild these old episodes were. Boom, boom. The Jiffy Pop is ready. <laughs> I wonder if it's possible for the bag to explode. I've never had that no, happen. No, it's never happened. Yeah, it just slowly, <laughs> slowly leaks. Yeah. You know what, since this is your idea, sir, why don't you take the first oh, blast right. out of that? Fair one. enough. I think the hardest part for me is find, I, like, I'll think of like a one bit, like a tweet joke that I want to make it into a whole joke, joke, joke. And it's hard to take, you know, just a small little idea mm. and make it a big joke. Like I have this thing that I, that happened, actually happened to me the other day. I think it's hilarious, but I need to build off of it. I can't just say that and be like, ha ha. That's it, you know? Well, you know what, man? Um, the, the War of Art is a, a brilliant book by Dr. Stephen Pressfield. Dr. Stephen Pressfield? I just gave him a doctorate. While they were baked out of their mind, Joe spoke about this hilarious Fear Factor story. We did Fear Factor in a, um, a slaughterhouse, oh. and that was pretty dark, man. It was dark. It smelled up. So we had uh, it's brutal. It, was, it had the weird stench to it, and we had a guy go crazy there. It was um, one of the few times on Fear Factor where I was worried about my safety. Because uh, oh, yeah. the stunt was a guy had to dunk his head, everybody had to dunk their head in blood. We had this cow's blood, and you had to keep the cow's blood at 38 degrees. It couldn't get any warmer than that, because around 40, 41 degrees, it starts developing bacteria like very quickly, and you can get incredibly ill. And this guy was like one of those Tony Robbins motivational guys, like he had bought like motivational tapes, and he had read books, and he was like repeating his mantra to him, and he was standing outside, he was a big guy, man. He was like a football player, he was yoked. He was a lot bigger than me, man. And he was standing in front of this, um, like, a, a side view mirror on a pickup truck, and he was talking to the mirror. He was like, you are a winner. You are a person who succeeds. You are a person who sets goals and accomplishes them. And he was pacing back and forth, and then he would go back to that mirror, and he would say it over and over again. Oh. And he was like, all this positive affirmations. And I was like, oh, my God, this guy's crazy. And I just started thinking, oh, this guy's crazy. We got a crazy guy on the show. How do you screen this crazy guy on the show? And so then he gets to, to the time where he has to do his stunt. Well, there's a bunch of people before him, and they do it, and girls do it, all these people do it, but he does it, and he starts freaking out. He can't do it. He can't. He's choking. He's choking. You know, the reason why he needs all this crazy motivation, he's got a fucking tornado of in his brain and it just wins every time something comes up and he just can't he can't accomplish things so he's in this blood and he starts slapping the blood down fuck, fuck, and he's screaming oh, and he's covered in blood and then i'm looking around and these cameramen and they all like smoke cigarettes and they're out of shape and you know there's like a little skinny guy who's holding their cord and i'm like there's no security here we've got a crazy guy covered in blood and I'm gonna tell him that he's eliminated from the show. You just he took Carrie to the prom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm ready for lightning bolts to come out of his eyes and the place to go on fire and we all die in a Stephen King movie. So why was this episode deleted? I'll just play the clip. Uh, you've already said John Heffron. John Heffron is another stand-up comedian. This is another common trend, it seems. He's appeared six times on the podcast, but his third and fourth appearances were both deleted. With the first episode, Joe kicks it off, ripping into a woman. I know uh, a woman that was barely overweight, man. I mean, she was like five pounds overweight, maybe? Like a little, a right, little right. overweight? Right, right. She had two last cans of Coca-Cola the week. I, I wouldn't lose. even say five, okay? <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. She was probably 10 pounds over the, the perfect, you know, what, what, but she was good. It, she wasn't fat, and she got lipo. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you lazy bitch. You're just gonna go and get that stuff sucked out of you? There's like a serious, easy solution. Yeah. Just fuck, eat less, work out more. It's that simple, you know? Get up an hour earlier. Yeah. You know, just fucking do, do some crazy DVD. You know, Walk 30% faster yeah. than you normally walk. Even if you can't get to a gym, yeah. do you know how many fucking DVDs there are out there? All you have to do is follow the DVD. You need two hand weights, and you follow along with yeah. this crazy fitness freak, and the next thing you know, you're in shape. You know, it's goddamn, you know? It's getting... A, a f hose stuffed under your skin and sucking fat out of your body. Whoa, man. That's that's some deep sh man. And then you have to wear compression shorts. You have to wear these heavy, heavy shorts because if you don't, then a lot of times it doesn't smooth out good. A lot of times what happens when you get the lipo is it leaves behind like, like funky, like meteor crater type. Sh you know, it doesn't, it's not all smooth like your leg. You know, so you're, yeah, it's a little thinner, but it's all weird when you touch it. You know, if you could feel scar tissue under there, man. They're, they're chewing out your body, you lazy <laughs> Get the 
Jim, this would be considered controversial nowadays, but Joe put the nail in the coffin with this comment. Well, everybody's got a goddamn camera on their cell phone. There's pictures of the guy from Seinfeld yelling on stage. There's video of that. <laughs> What are the odds you're there with, when yeah, that right. happens and you have a camera? Right. You know, there's that. How often does that happen? Right. That might have never happened ever again in the whole universe. Right. Kramer from Seinfeld right. yelling right. on stage at the Laugh Factory, and someone got a video of that. Right. You're telling me they don't have one video of one alien, one video of one little gray man in your room that's realistic to me. On the other hand, whilst most episodes were deleted in Joe Rogan's initial move to Spotify in early 2020, and then more in 2022, episode 64 with John Heffron was only removed at the start of 2024. As this is a recent removal, there is no footage from it anywhere on the internet we could find. So the reason behind it is a mystery. Maybe the people in power are trying to cover something up. If you have any theories, let us know in the comment section. Daryl Wright and Brian Whitaker. Both these guys are American stand-up comedians. Daryl is still very active in his comedy career. I might be talking crazy because I don't smoke weed no more. I'm not lying, they all. Now, no, and y'all, San Bernardino, y'all the reason why I, don't, why, I don't, why I don't smoke weed no more. I was here like a year ago, me and a friend of mine from DC. Right out here, matter of fact, we was out there high as Minding our own business selling drugs, and the cops. <laughs> and the cops jumped out on us. Do y'all realize the cops down here have dogs? Thanks for telling me now. I'm being chased down y'all main street by a cop and a dog, which is not fair, because the dog has four legs. Now, we're running, and the cop's dog catches up to my friend, bites him in the leg right here, bites the shit. Now, I was so high, I turned around and laughed at him. <laughs> That's how I got caught. But anyway, <laughs> I heard weed gives you the munchies, which must be true, because my friend turned around and bit the dog back. Whereas Brian Whitaker has less than 10 subscribers on YouTube and edits laughing noises into his videos. It's just being, to be a whole movie of this awesome male hero just having a ball, ripping everyone's nuts off. And... <laughs> And then out of nowhere, as soon as he's about to kill the main bad guy, some dumb broad he plowed 20 minutes ago just pops up like, STOP! <laughs> Don't kill him, where's it gonna end, don't you see? <laughs> Even as an eight-year-old in the theater, you're like, that's not a female. <laughs> no, no I've, I've met females in real life, and I'm on to you. After all that was said on this episode, it's not a surprise it was taken down. Look, we saw how ugly that got. There was um, so many murders in New Orleans during the, the, the after then, Katrina. They then, didn't even, they can't even yeah, they count them. But they then, they don't even know what to do. But this was murdering people in, in New Orleans when the lights was on. They so were, but like, it got worse. It got way, 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 way worse. worse. It got worse with saying. the cops, too. The cops went all zombie vigilanteism. <laughs> there were cops were driving around in pickup trucks, picking people off yeah. with guns. There's a lot of crazy shit went down in New Orleans, man. A lot of people were killed. I, I guarantee you we could have an awesome TV show where it take you and put you in a fucking bow tie and bring you around white neighborhoods in the South and you will see some bad. racism like I you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Dog, I, I could add to what you're saying. I mean, I've like been to the South, man. I know you yeah, have. I've been to the South. I love the South now. because Which, my whole thing. Yeah. What I'm saying, you by yourself with a clipboard going through white neighborhoods. Yeah, my whole theory. Theater. Now, see, now. Also write down every time someone calls you a Hmm. I need more paper. <laughs> Wright would talk about his great idea while in jail. Okay, I went in, right, and I had some shoes, tennis shoes. Right. And these dudes wanted them. And right. I had to fight them every day to keep my fucking shoes. And then really? I, I got sick of fighting these guys. So I had a bright idea that instead of fighting them, I'll just hit the CEO so n will think that I'm crazy. Right. Well, I did that. And what happened was they got these people called this but they got these cops called the stormtroopers. Like they'll run into the tier in riot gear if anything break out, like full riot gear. That shit. I hit the CO and these dudes roll in and when I woke up, I was in the infirmary. I had broken ribs, like they fed me up. Damn. So when I got out of the infirmary, they sent me to solitary for 45 days. You should have asked somebody about that plan. Like, yo, listen, who, who am I gonna talk to? People right? trying to take my You're lonely at first, I'm I guess. thinking about going crazy and f***ing up a cop. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to f*** up. I, I hit that cop one time. Just a body shot. Just a n***a dog. 
before I think I drew my fist back, I had like 10 mother. Is it right? But did they stop wow. to take your shoes after that? Yeah. So yeah, they like, not, like, knocked you out. No, no, no. Right oh, they, oh, oh, the cops. Yeah, but people thought I was nuts. From watching this episode, I can see Daryl Wright's comedy career outperformed Brian Whitaker's. Jim Norton. Jim Norton is a stand up comedian, podcast host, and author. An interesting fact is that his wife is openly 29 years younger, from Norway, and transgender. I can't find any video footage from the episode. However, it was the first ever live audience episode. Our guest, Mr. Jimmy Norton, let him know, folks. Come on, little Jimmy. Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to the first ever live podcast that we've done. Your rests on your hands if this sucks. This story alone could be enough to get the episode removed. My friend Eddie dated a lot of girls that used to do meth. He was dating a lot of strippers at one point in his life. And uh, he would say, you always know when you're dating a girl who does meth because their houses are spotless. Because <laughs> they don't eat. And he goes, and you can f*** them in the butt and there's never anything in there. Because they don't eat. That's they right. never so you never have to worry. It's always clean. He's like, it's amazing. You just go in the ass all the time. That's great. You know they don't waste any time with dental hygiene if they're on meth. That's great. So if you the ass real hard, a tooth falls out. You go, ah. <laughs> that was a two-toother. All right. And when you combine that with this comment from Joe, it's no surprise the episode was taken down. The, the hate speech, like I, I recently retired the word f and I, I relish every chance to talk about how I retired the word f so I get to use it again. <laughs> just, just, I love the way it comes off the tongue. It's just, comes out you know, I have a few bits now that I would like to throw f it in there. Yeah. And then for good measure, Joe finished off with this. And then when they aired it after 1 a.m., they went it uncensored completely, except they beeped out f Like, that's too much. Like, they drew a line. And so I had a conversation with this guy, a gay guy at the network. And he goes, well, it's, it's incredibly offensive. And quite frankly, it's our word. I go, what? And he goes, he goes, it's our name. He goes, we can say f I go, that's the gayest shit I've ever heard in my life. And you can go f yourself. And I said it an extra three or four years just because of that guy. He goes, he's like, this is the stupidest f***ing argument ever. You know, like, th having one word like f is bad enough. One dangerous out there, Candyman, Candyman, Candyman word. I mean, right. just say it and fucking people punch you in the head. It's the craziest fucking thing ever. You know, you could walk down the street and call your 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 basketball a for you non-bouncing, and people would just beat the out of you. They will fuck you up. Like Did you have to use no other word like Joe? that. I, it just came to mind. That's the first thing that came to mind. Bill Burr. This is another regular on the podcast. Bill Burr has many great moments on the podcast, but in this removed episode, he had one of his most legendary moments in the early history of the podcast. On Stitcher anymore, right? You pull it off of Stitcher? Yeah, I took it off. Yeah. Right. So it's not a lot of, lot of controversy with this Stitcher app. Yeah, they just sort yeah. of... Apparently people are getting... I love they, Stitcher and I back it up 100%. I, don't I, I think it. it's awesome being able to go in your car and just have be able to choose podcasts and listen to them automatically you know streaming well, this kind is the of. problem i had they just took mine never told me and then we're selling advertising and they will make it whoa which is yeah that's not fucking cool so that's we, illegal we, yeah you we told them, them to stop and then they they sent me an offer which is hilarious it's like someone stole your, your car and then you show up, hey, give me my car back. Like, hey, look, I put some rims on it. You know, you want a piece of that? It's like, what? People that it's like, you're gonna, you're gonna cut it. me in on the average. What about all the money you've already made off of the fucking thing you didn't give you? Yeah, exactly. It's like that internet mm -hmm. thing where just like, hey, you know, everybody can take everybody's shit. You don't, don't think there's a problem with that, Brian? That you're no. providing free content and they're selling advertisement on it? No, I have no problem with it. How come? Because they're offering a, a service. They're offering, if my if my listeners want to drive around and be able to stream my show, I'm not offering that on my website. So let them do it. And let, oh, yeah, I, you I know. offer it on my How website. How do you drive around? You, you, you have to you stream can it through it on my, on You can my stream website. it. You can stream it off of your mobile phone. No, you can you go to like iTunes and I and like, look at, look at, this is the thing about That's what I'm saying though. You can't do that. You can, if, you, if you're driving in your car right now and you're like, I want to listen to Joe Rogan's podcast from four know, but weeks dude, ago. You, you, you're streaming something that I created. You got to kick me money for that. You yeah. can't just take, you, they're, right. they're not just streaming. That, that'd be like if I started a radio station and I started playing yeah, but music not, but and I, let me finish. And I didn't pay anybody. I didn't play any of the musicians. But they're not putting advertising in the show. Yeah, they are. 
No, dude, I listen no, to no, streamer no, all no, the time. Adding, they're no. adding dude, ads. Dude, you miss. Why are they coming to the website? They're not. Look, they're not putting advertising in the show. They're not yeah. adding ads. No, they're, they're not adding ads in the show. Why are guys saying that they are? Because I think on Stitcher's website or like on the apps, they have advertising. Oh, they have on the ads. Side. On the yeah, apps. and they're That's getting it. all these hits. Who cares about that? No, because because they're making they're money making off money. of our stuff, dude. This back and forth between Burr and Red Band continues for a few more minutes while continuing to escalate. You play a band song, in radio. The band gets paid. Okay. You get paid. Okay. Do you understand okay. that? All right, but I'm saying that there's no ads on this. So, so, so I'm going to comedy right now. I'm typing in comedy. Now I'm going to comedians. Here's comedians right up here. Now there's a uh, little banner that pops up at the very bottom. But uh, yeah, I don't sure know. Yeah, that right little there. banner Des makes Des money. Death Squad, I'm at the very that, top. That little banner All makes right. money. I know, and but then Facebook makes money off of you, but you're on Facebook. Are you going to sue Facebook and pull off your stuff off Facebook? That makes shit loads yeah, of money. Yeah, but wait a minute. No, if no, he had a, hold on, no, but he no, had a wait, blog wait, wait. Me, and they finish, copied his blog finish, entries and put it on Facebook no, and then started selling advertising. Dude, I chose. Well, you chose to be on Stitcher, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, no, they he asked you. No, no he didn't. they didn't ask you. I That's didn't. the whole point of right. what he's saying, Brian, is that right. they copied I, his I shit. I chose to be on Facebook, and I choose what I put right. to go to right. put up. I did not choose to be on Stitcher. What? Stitcher took my shit and put... See, no advertising before it. This is me talking. Okay, Brian, he's talking. Huh? Yeah, dude, you, you know, it's like I'm trying, to make, I'm trying to explain it. We had it right there, and, right. and you're so convinced of your argument. I mean, if you're totally convinced of your argument, I'll just stop right oh, now. No. Then finally, after 20 minutes of arguing, it culminated in this. That bring you there, like these yes. guys play the music I want. That's why the bands get played. People are going to Stitcher. So you have a problem with YouTube too then? Do you have videos on YouTube? Dude, this is one of these guys, like this, this is one of these guys on where it's just like, you can't make a point because he's already, RSS thinking, feeds he's are already used. thinking of his next point and he just wants to be right. No, yeah. I'm just saying what that's, what that's what RSS feeds. If you don't want, like distributed and like made money off it. Like you don't have an RSS feed on your website. RSS feed on your website is for other websites to grab and no. use your content. For, for, no, it's not. It's yeah. to get shit and for free. applications. No, it's to download shit for free. It's it's something that allows you to yeah, keep up with free. people as well, they put out you, podcasts. If, if to go, go, they go to your iPod. Stitcher does. Stitcher grabs your RSS feed and repackages. No, it doesn't. And, and it copies your MP3. You're wrong. And it gets it, it from copies your, your MP3 feed. and then sends it out through its own application it's and it has advertising on its application. You are one hundred percent wrong and there's no way to convince him because he's he's totally convinced of his okay. argument okay. yeah it, it totally convinced wrong. of it wrong. well you brian the point is dude we're not saying you're a bad person the look point at you, the down point at is you're sulking you cannot listen what makes this clip even more legendary is that in a later episode brian redband goes on the computer to bring up bill burr's twitter like just puts his hand up and you have to high five and fuck <laughs> even the way he high fived was hilarious mine was somehow i went up to greer barnes not Greer Barnes. I went up to Godfrey and, and, and said some really shit to him as Greer Barnes was standing there delivering a package. Like, dude, hey, took a recommendation. Something like, Godsford's, Godsford's Park was hilarious. Some really stupid white movie. And then Greer's sitting there looking at Godfrey like he's a fucking salad or whatever. As you can see, Red Band finds out he has been blocked, which Joe and Burr are oblivious to it. And the argument that they had in the removed episode 91 likely is one of the reasons behind the block. But moving back to the topic, and you couldn't see. Andy Dick. Andy Dick is a comedian who had his best times in the 90s. He had his one and only appearance on the podcast removed, but has since been seen on the internet fighting people whilst under the influence. You don't put your hand like everybody. You're tripping. Stop. No, you yeah, said, too. dude, I want a treat. What? <laughs> <laughs> This episode was deleted due to Andy Dick's mental instability and substance abuse, which caused Andy Dick to be arrested on livestream for felony sexual battery. Jan Irvin Jan Irvin is a renowned conspiracy theorist and host of the Gnostic Media Podcast. He's the guy who first gave Rogan DMT and introduced him to McKenna's lectures. But describe Joe on DMT versus Eddie when Eddie took it. You, you, I mean, you, well, you, Joe, Joe just kind of sat back in the couch and relaxed and and went into his little world for six or seven minutes and came out very peacefully. Despite this, he was only on the episode once, and this is because Joe and Jan ended up on bad terms, which is shown in the episode. 
Was it like only with the, the powers of the church? Was it a- right? Well, it was it was kept with it was kept for the elite, those who basically had the knowledge of the trivium and quadrivium or had studied the seven liberal arts. They were considered better than the than the masses or the dead. Rich financiers like Oppenheimer or or Walter Lippmann or, or uh, 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 Frank Ashold. These guys, geek boner right now, right? Here it comes. All of these guys were in on this top knowledge, and they were sharing this information at the top levels. I can actually, you know, I have documentation I have the from that. Actually, these are from university, like from the CFR archives. But he was also okay. working with with Gordon Wasson at, at. This is what I know, wanted. CFR. This, this is what I wanted to avoid. Now, <laughs> this is whenever I talk to Jan, he has to go so deep with all this conspiracy type oh. shit. And I'm sure it's oh, consp- all real. Well, I'm sure it's all real. I'm, I shouldn't say conspiracy. He conspired. They conspired to do something in this Well, I have people. the documents that I show that they were together. Did. That's, that's not interesting to me. What's interesting to me is how this all What about those started in, your audience in the first place? Might be. Da, da, da. Dude, that's why you need you, to get you Twitter. You go too far. You go too far. You go too far down to this guy, that guy. I got to take notes on names. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Like honestly, it, I, to me, it's like you start saying all these names and stuff, and I'm so confused because I don't yeah. know any of these Trust names. Trust me. Or take it from an entertainer who knows his audience. This argument continued for over 45 minutes, and so the episode descended into chaos, with many people online feeling like Joe was being disrespectful. Therefore, it is no surprise Joe had this episode removed in order to save face. But do, how often do you communicate about what you do to someone who is completely uninitiated? So what I'm trying to say is I've had some conversations before, and uh, one of them I had on a plane with a doctor. Right. And he was a very intelligent guy. And uh, we, we sat down, and, you know, he was just being real friendly and started off with, like, fear factor questions. And then well, for somebody like that, you, you start off, you know, with, with ancient primary sources and things like that because... You know, a doctor is going to want to cut straight to the facts, no bullshit. So just give well, them the sorry. primary okay, text okay. Listen, and listen, listen. give them the iconography. A, and... Listen, listen, dude. It's a social situation. You're having a drink with a guy on a plane. You're not breaking things down for him. You're just talking. You're shooting the shit. It's right. conversation. The, something that might be easier for a guy like that would be like Dr. Roland Griffith's work. Oh, he's fucking name dropping again? This could be. Okay, because well, I mean, let's if you're go back and to selling like, it, giving you know, people whatever, gold but... coins and shit and making, hey, man, here's a basket. Can I have some eggs? You know what I mean? Like, we can go back to bartering things, but in the meantime, we need a goddamn government, you know? Well, we need, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure about that. There you is a myth a of government? government out there. There is a myth of government. We need some structure. We need to be able to call the cops. We need someone who's going to fucking fix the roads. We need roads. Yeah. yeah. We need some shit. To say we don't yeah. need some make sort of... Help us make yeah. roads. Well, the Come problem on, is, is <laughs> when they... say we don't need any organization, is kind of silly. That's ridiculous. Well, you have to... <laughs> See, I don't want to give, give a name call out here, but ch- please check, don't. Check There's out 300 out. million people, man. You need go some to my sort of podcast structure. and check out this show called The Myth of Government that I did a few weeks ago. Okay. Dave Foley. Dave Foley is another comedian whose first appearance on the podcast was deleted. During this episode, Foley would give the details of his messy divorce. All right, you can go see the therapist. Set the traps. Yeah. yeah. So she goes in and, exp- and explains to the therapist that I'm an abusive husband. Uh, you know, and then she starts phoning. Fi- she yeah, she's excuse me, being physically abusive. Whoa! Uh, and then she starts like phoning my family and friends and saying that I'm physically abusive. Wow. Okay, it's complete fabrications, right? So she's just yeah creating well, stories. Remember, uh, a good friend of mine, Steve Hibber, when he heard this, said that's crazy. If if Dave was abusive, uh, she would be dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. but no, but then I go into therapy and the therapist goes, you know, who is prepared for this abusive husband to walk in. And she goes, it was, and she explained to me later, she said, it was very weird because you walked in and you didn't match the description of you at all. And she said, when you walked in, yeah, and I saw you two together, I immediately realized that if anyone in this couple was abused, it was, it was, it was me. Did the therapist say this to her? Uh, I don't know if she ever said it to her in therapy. Did you have a one-on-one with the therapist? I had one-on-one with her. Yeah, we both saw her individually and together. This divorce is super messy. I well, more. she hasn't talked to me directly, you know? Really? It's so, all through lawyers. But again, <gasps> they, they were trying uh, through this, this organization called the FRO, the Family Responsibility Office in uh, Ontario, that, and this, this legal office is really responsible for hounding a lot of men to their death. Like, there's a real problem with, like, people committing suicide um, after being prosecuted by these people. And uh, they uh, they were trying to get me... Like, in November, I was sitting in a court in, like, November 20th, I guess. 
sitting in court and thinking at the end of that day I might go to jail for six months. So they were they were pushing for me to go to jail for six months. This is what the, the FRO was asking. Six month jail sentence if I didn't come up with half a million dollars that day. Um, and an additional 30 days for every month I didn't come up with the money. Oh my God. So, and I was sitting there going, well, the judge, if he goes for it, I. You're in jail for life. They'll cuff me there that day, take oh me to jail. Oh my God. And I'll go to jail for six months. At the end of six months, they'll say, you know, well, do you have the half million dollars? And, and plus the ongoing money that would accrue over the six months. And I'd say, no, I've been in jail for six months. How was I supposed to earn any money? All right, that's another 30 days. At the end of that 30 days, you got the money? No, I've been in jail. So it's essentially a life sentence unless someone gives you $500,000. Yeah. How, yeah. Long, how long? How How much longer do you have for this? Uh, well, it's really it's unending until I pay off the arrears. As Folly discussed the case of his divorce and his dealings with the Canadian justice system, this episode was taken down for legal reasons as the case was ongoing. Pete Johansson. Pete Johansson is another famous Canadian stand-up comic with his one and only podcast appearance back in 2011 that was deleted. This is another episode we could only find the audio for, and interestingly, the guest, Pete Johansson, was one hour late to this episode. If you want to go the conspiracy route, Joe does mention this in this episode. Many of them were working in various industries, and they think, I mean, that was like a famous quote from uh, a, a CIA, one of the former heads of the CIA, that every single person of any significance in the media has been compromised. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, definitely. Like, like, that's hilarious. You know, like, whenever you see, like, famous actors, like, at the White House, like, shaking hands with people, and, right. you know, and, like, what is that all about? What are they doing? I don't know. We already made a video about if Joe Rogan has been compromised by the CIA, so if you want to know more, we will leave it in the video cards. On this topic, Joe made a big conspiracy allegation, which also could be the reason behind this episode being taken down. Pretty much likely that a comedian wouldn't be in the CIA, except for Dennis Miller. <laughs> Dennis Miller, I think that guy right. turned, he turned Republican and conservative hard so quick. He became so weird. He's like a shill now. It's really weird. However, it is more likely this sensitive topic which Rogan would also describe, which is sad, was too explicit for Spotify. You hear about that broad in Egypt? Uh, the one that got Porter? Yeah. Fuck, dude, this is horrific, man. Yeah. Especially having daughters, you know, I, I think like this in a different way. You know, this, this chick was over there and apparently she got separated from her camera crew and they beat her and her for a half an hour. I know. I mean, I don't know the extent of the beating or the extent of the sexual assault, whatever, but I mean, whatever it was. I mean, if it was slight, it would, would have been horrific and terrifying, but it's obviously significant because she's in the hospital. Wasn't she with like a cameraman and a crew though? I don't know what happened. Well, I think it was total, complete chaos. I mean, you got to think about the situation in Egypt is they had a dictator, the same guy running everything for 31 years. I mean, this guy just wouldn't go and, and they overthrew him with the internet. Supposedly. Maybe the CIA, too. CIA. <laughs> the CIA, probably. Yeah. Right? I don't ever trust that anything that happens in another country, that we just let shit happen. Right. Little Esther. She was the first female guest to appear on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. She's a comedian who also was Red Band's girlfriend back in the day. They would also talk about this. Like a little... <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Brian just put a floppy... In Esther's lap, one That's of the, the flashlight, flashlight ones. They made them. It's sort of a proof of concept device. Like they didn't make it so that anyone can use it, obviously, because it's too soft and it wouldn't really be functional unless you're just into disappointment. <laughs> but uh, they just wanted to show that they could get this. They did kick the podcast off blasting this song for a full minute, so copyright is most likely an issue. Popping bottles in the However, as mentioned, Red Band and Little Esther did break up, so it is also possible that this could also have something to do with the episode being taken down. Doug Stanhope Doug Stanhope is a comedian who has been on the podcast more than 10 times. However, his first episode is the only one that was removed from the internet. The first clip is of a crazy story in which Joe Rogan makes a comment which definitely would not pass nowadays. So anyway, the we the the guy is you know strapped to this table and she climbs all over him and he's he licked her, right? Did he I, lick her? I, I can't remember. Poor guy, we tortured this guy's memory forever. <laughs> so he's he's like everyone's going yeah yeah yeah, people are cheering, and then she pulls out this tranny that looks like like a poison monkey. 
That's what it looked like. It looked sick. Like it, it had been hit with so many female hormones. It was like an old man in a wheelchair. That's what a dick looked like. And she pulled it out. It was black. It was black. And was it functional dark at and all? Poisoned. Or was it just a bunch of skin? No, no, it's done. It's all done. I mean, it's just no, it's hanging off there. But... I mean, it probably feels good when you suck it still. Right. You know, even a soft feels good if you suck it. Right. But I don't think, I don't think there's, unless she pops Viagra. Maybe she could pop Viagra and have, still have a hard. But she's just so full of female hormones, or he is. However, Stanhope would also drop this bomb out of nowhere in a conversation about people continuing to chase their dream of being a comedian. Glutting the market. He talks about how he's got all these comics motivated now, and they're working together in these communities, and they're having writers clubs together. <laughs> but what you're doing, you're, you're saying everyone's innately funny, which is so horribly untrue. And what you're doing is giving them perseverance to keep bothering bookers and bothering promoters and clogging up open mic nights with shitty comedy because you told them, don't quit, keep trying. I Even agree. though you're not funny it whatsoever but out of those like you're you're speaking to the worst case scenario so if there's a hundred people that take his course there might be one or two that sneaks through the fucking salmon ladder they would that anyway actually they would they, anyway they might or anyway in spite you're of. right they might anyway and they might in spite of but he might have introduced them to the game he might have gotten them inspired you know it's what a lot of girls are in they got <laughs> <laughs> i see your point tyler knight now instead of being a comedian Tyler Knight was an adult film star. He only appeared once on the Joe Rogan Experience back in 2010, and he has starred in over 300 films. In 2009, he won the Good For Her Feminist Porn Award as Heartthrob of the Year. I've gotten calls, dude, of uh, people saying, hey, Tyler, you want to make a tape with, and I'm not going to say the name, XYZ Celebrity or whatever, you know, to you know, jumpstart a career, and I'm like, you're kidding me, right? No, really, really. Wow. So it's, yeah, you're right. It happens all the time. Man. There must, the people who just want to be famous, like the, you know, the, the people out there just trying to find some angle on getting famous. Well, how exactly. What a fucking crazy world that is. Where you're just sitting there calculating. What should we do? Should we make a sex tape? We should make a sex tape. We can fake my death. Let's fake I'm drowning. Now think of mm. all the other five or six things on the list. That 20 things on the list you get to before that comes out to be a viable option. Now, this episode mainly consisted of them discussing Tyler's career and the entire adult industry. However, due to Rogan's use of the N-word towards the end of this episode, it was of course taken down. Sam Tripoli. So, we are back with another comedian who is also a big time conspiracy theorist. Sam Tripoli was on the podcast a lot during the early days, but over time started to be a guest less and less. It was his first appearance, however, that was taken down. Like most of these old episodes, it includes some wild stories. I used to have a foot fetish because I dated this girl who was you like, did? really wow. into her feet. Yeah, she was really into her feet. And she had, like, you know, cute feet. She just had, was really into them, though, and she would, like, rub my, her feet on my dick and feel like that. She was right. crazy. Right. But, you know, like, she would try to, to like, uh, me off with her feet. You know, <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a freak. She was a freak. Uh, I just met somebody that liked that. She was a freak. But this was when I was really young. You know, I was like 16, 17. You know, I was like one of my first girlfriends. So Sounds I had this awesome. foot thing for a while. You know, you connect. Right. You connect that with sexuality. I think if you, weird. if you get into connect, yeah, maybe that's weird, but it wasn't like that. I was only into feet. Like, I just thought I like girls with pretty feet. You, but sexy. you didn't see, like, see your feet and then, like, pop a boner, did you? No, no, no. But I thought I found them attractive, though. I found the whole package attractive and the fact that she was, like, really into her feet. So you don't have a foot fetish now? No, I don't like them to be gross. But no, I don't have a foot fetish. However, with cancel culture being at an all-time high, it was Joe's repeated use of this slur, which is why the episode has been removed. You kind want of people do. that bash iPhones because they don't have iPhones. Or them. Apple. Somebody put a thread up on the underground the other day. Uh, Tom Lawler, filthy Tom Lawler, the, the fighter, <laughs> said, "Why should I uh, tell me why I should buy a Mac?" And you know, people are like, "You, uh, if you're gay, you should tell me if you're gay." <laughs> it's all these dudes like get upset at Macs. You know, it's so weird. There's so many. There, bro. There's so many. And all of them just need, they needed to be raised better. All of them. All of them were raised by other re And it's just a cycle. We got to thin the herd. Don't we? You know what we got to do? We got to figure out a way to fucking make people, like, develop and grow and evolve and catch the fuck up. Because these dumbasses having kids, these people that are just, their life is a holy wreck and their relationships are filled with fucking yelling and screaming and chaos and all sorts of dysfunctional bullshit. 
and drugs and alcoholism and, and hate and anger. These kids grow up in that and then they're f Tom Segura. Tom Segura is again another comedian who is a big time regular on the podcast. This is the second earliest episode to be removed, and I am sure by this point in the video you can guess why it was taken down. Kimbo Slice does, you know what I'm saying, like every other word, you know what I'm saying, I'm here to put these things on, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 of course. I've heard so many interviews with like athletes, let's yeah. say, that it's, it's, you know what I'm saying, after everything. And then, What's hilarious is when you hear comics use like, like a rapper will use and this try to tell me, I'm like, you better get the fuck out of my face, I know what the fuck's going on. Both episodes 664 and 1103 with Tom Segura, which we did not mention in part one, were also removed for similar reasons. <laughs> Y'all don't know though. <laughs> so are people allowed to use the N-word now that Obama said it on Mark Maron's oh, podcast? Oh. What I'm doing in the bit is, is basically lamenting but accepting that words are changing. Right. Like that's the tone of it. Yes. The tone of it is I'm going like, can't say every anymore, that fucking sucks. But I'm also like... All right, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like you're you saying, okay, you yeah, give like, into it. Brian Redband. Finally, we have the guest who has had the most episodes he featured in removed. Redband was the show's first guest, and he was also the producer and like a co-host. So it is slightly cheating putting his name in our list, but he has been in more than 15 episodes that have been removed. We have already covered some of them, but here are the remaining Redband removed episodes. The two first episodes to get banned were with Rich Voss and Matt Van Grin. The reasoning isn't interesting. Both were due to copyright, with Red Band showing clips of Comedy Central and then the full scary movie trailer in the other episode. Another guest who was on the podcast a lot during the early days but then faded into obscurity is Freddie Lockhart. His episode that was removed contained his hilarious impression skills that were a staple of his comedy routine. Can yes. you do Jesse Ventura? Jesse the Body Ventura! That's now it's good, Jesse yeah. the Mind Ventura. That's I come good, on yeah, Joe yeah. Rogan's podcast to talk the truth. Yeah, I <laughs> think pretty, I got it. I think that's I got pretty it. goddamn good. Now, like a lot of these earlier episodes, it was removed for some controversial racial comments. Freddie is one of those, you know, you know that he's got some black in him, but how much? How much? What's going on here? Are you asking what me exactly? to strip Joe Rogan yeah, right what, now? What are you? Yeah, you uh, uh, dad's black, mom's white. Standard issue, pretty much. Powerful, powerful Dude. combination genetic-wise, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll One of the strongest that. combinations of all time. I would say so. Yeah, you get the body of the black man, and then you get the mind of the white man all right. together in some yeah. strange combination. It's why you the know, University he, of Arizona won the 1996 national championship. The whole that doesn't, was by mixed. the way, mean that black people don't have brains. It's no. a different brain. Don't, right. don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is clearly black people have the superior bodies. The next episode with Red Band and Rogan featured another comedian who has faded into obscurity. Joe, early in the podcast, describes a story about how he found out babies were made. It was, she was a good person, but when she raised me, she was very young. You know, she was 20 when she had me. Me too. And so she didn't know. She was a dingbat. A kid. She was just yeah. a kid. She was a kid. A kid. Yeah. So like she assumed I knew everything. Right. Like right. I didn't know how people had As sex. As you did for her. I did not know how that people had sex and I didn't know how ba babies were born until I was seven. Wow. She never told me. And then she goes, you know. And I go, I don't know. <laughs> I go, I don't know. Tell me. Tell me what it is. You literally You're just going to make fun of it. I go, I'm just going to make fun of it. Tell me how people make babies. I had no idea <laughs> and my mom i was in the car i remember this very clearly 1970 barracuda i'm sitting in the back seat with my sister and i go just tell me so she tells me she goes the man sticks his ass in the woman's vagina i start fucking laughing right and right. she reaches back and hits me in the head for laughing she's like i knew it right. i knew you were just, i knew you're just trying to make fun of it i go i didn't know i didn't know what it meant it's a legitimate so question that was one time that happened that joe would then segue from this story to drop the end bomb a couple times Hence why this episode is taken down. And the other time it happened was we were in Florida because some kid kept talking about n There was some kid in my school that just kept talking about n Like, man, we got problems here. These n are moving in. And I was like, what the f*** is this guy talking about? And I just moved there, so I didn't want to ask questions. You know, I was a shy 11-year-old from San Francisco. All of a sudden, I'm around alligators and shit. Right. You know, and so I, and I asked my mom. I said, what is it? And she's like, will you stop doing that? Don't make me talk about things I don't want to talk about. And I go, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. That's she funny. goes, it's, it's a bad word for black people. And I was like, whoa. Right. Like, hold on. Like, this dude is, like, claiming there's some war going on between right. white people and black people. <laughs> well, in his mind, and there I'm are. Like, is that really going down out here? Like, I was so shocked that the environment was so radically different. 
I know all these episodes have Red Ban in them, but really Joe is the majority of the reason why most of these have been taken down. Oh, wait a minute. Think the, about this. The kids in uh, my neighborhood, they used to call this thing where they would uh, knock on the door and run. They would used to call it knocking. Yep. And I didn't know that the word what? So uh, one of my times I was like in front of the class doing something, I brought up, yeah, so me and my friends like to go knocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Under your interests of things you like to do. Oh, no, you did not. Yeah, and I remember that I still didn't realize that that was a bad word for some time until one day I, How old I kept you? on using that word. And oh, my God. My mom was like, listen here, this is a bad word. But but then my grandmother would be like, oh, I can't believe they still have colored cashiers at this. this you know, all the, like she would say the word colored all the time. I'm like, what? What's that about? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the next deleted episode is with Rogan and Red Band Oli the iconic duo. From the opening minute, you can see the transformation the podcast has gone through to get to the point it is at today. This one's dedicated oh, yeah. to all That's the it. haters out there. Jealous of us because... I guess he's, you pronounce it D-N word? It's I think we can understand why Joe would replace Red Band as the producer of the podcast. You know, but do you got it? Do you got yeah. Zeph's side? Yeah, if your Wi-Fi works see if it loads today. up. Because it's, um, it's, it's fascinating. You have to see the YouTube. No. They're like all just standing uh, outside. Yeah, lives with his granny, and then I live with my mom and dad down the road, and then Yolandi lives. <laughs> this is the most ghetto way popular. of showing something. You guys been friends? So why was this episode removed? I am sure by now you likely already can guess the answer. Guy who dresses up like a mm -hmm. uh, for sure he said somewhere in his life. Oh. For sure, right? Totally. He's, he doesn't like Jews. Do you think that he has ever touched mm -hmm. a child? Eh, could be. Could be he's touched a child. He's, he's something's wrong with that dude. There's definitely something very, very wrong with him. Another episode that was removed with just Rogan and Red Band is episode 21. Again, like all these old episodes, it is wild. And I put this picture up on my Twitter the other day. Somebody, somebody sent me this Twitter. Hey Joe, have you ever seen a triangle like this before? So I click on it, you know, thinking that it's probably a guy caught somebody in a triangle. Well, it sorta. What it is is this this site called ghettogaggers.com. Do you know that site? No. It's it's a site that is dedicated to all, it's all white guys like nerdy white guys and they're making these black ghetto chicks gag from in their mouths. What? And so I Tune into this picture. I clicked this link this guy sends me, and it's this white nerdy dude with these pale, skinny white legs with black socks and black sneakers on, and he's got a no arm triangle like this around this chick's head. This chick's head is like right here, and she's, you know, he's shoving his dick in her mouth with his triangle, and she's like literally throwing up all over his wow. and his toe. And I'm like, but it said so much to me though that what kind of a strange world do we live in where it's so normal to just click a link and it takes you to a guy stuffing his into some chick's mouth and she's throwing up all over his ass and all I do is giggle all I do is go ha you got me you f also like the majority of the old episodes they were both baked out of their mind well, I'm not talking about like like words like dogs talk to you but you ever meet a dog and you know you can't f with this dog oh, you yeah. never meet a dog and you're like what's going on buddy and you're looking at him and he's looking at you and you're like okay <laughs> let me get the fuck away from you that dog is sending there's somehow or another i mean it's not even his his demeanor he's not growling at you he but he's just giving you a look and you're getting a message you, he's communicating with you but you got all sorts of shit inside your head the stock market and your divorce and your and homework and this and that and language and english and i'm learning spanish and you got all this shit going on in your head I bet the Earth itself actually has it's like some sort of a way of communicating with, with beings and with animals that don't have languages. Like they can tune into shit that we can't tune into. You know? But That's what, how dogs can smell things and tune into things. And I mean, they have a super, super, super powered senses. So why was this episode removed? Well... That was the really uncomfortable scene where Quentin Tarantino tried to be down and said the word... To, to Samuel Jackson and kept saying it. I got a dead in my house. Like, why do I have a dead in my house? Right. And it was like, what? Yeah. Who the f talks like that? Yeah. You know, who? There's not even gangsters. Even, there's no white guys that's, that talk like that to black guys. Why do I have a dead in 
house. I mean, that scene was so fake. Yeah. And it was so like him living out some weird white boy fantasy where he wants to be able to say nick to a black guy because he wrote it in a script. We are at the final removed episode. Again, it is between Rogan and Red Band and it only took them four episodes to say something that could get them cancelled. But before we get into that, let's take a look back on this episode. To begin, the first five minutes of the podcast had no audio. No sound? Is there song? No sound? Is there song? Jesus Christ! I should have known. I couldn't hear myself. I should have known. Well, it's recorded on here, so the replays will have it. The replays will have it, but nobody wants to watch the replays, goddammit. Well, let's recap what, what we're talking about. What a hilarious cluster. Here, pause on that. Then. We're going <laughs> to mute the, mute the audio. Why am I muting the audio? Because it's an echo. Oh, because you hear me. What was also very different is that the old shows were live streamed, and they answered the viewers' questions, which led to some interesting interactions. Hey, uh, oh, look, check this guy. David Gowie, G-O-E-W-E-Y, says, I'm up at 3.48 a.m. in Abu Dhabi. Now answer some questions, Joe. Well, yeah, dude, I'll answer some questions. You're up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you live in Abu Dhabi? I got some questions for you, sir. What's it like over there, man? I hear that it's all like, everybody's got a Ferrari. It's like like one of the richest places in the world. I've heard it's fucking crazy. Is that true? Is prostitution sir? real? Legal there? I don't think prostitution is, but I think if you're like, you know, some sort of a baller character, I mean, I think they just ignore it. I mean, the way it happens in uh, Dubai is like all the hookers just go there. They just know where all the rich guys are, that right. rich guys go to Dubai, so the hookers just come from everywhere. And I think they just ignore it. So why was this episode removed? Well, of course, it is because they used slurs. And at the end of the day, like, what language is supposed to represent is your the context of your thoughts, you know? And the problem is when words get hyper-powered, like or n or f now, it's like the new one. You know, or love. Love's a hyperpowered word too. You know, these words get hyperpowered, and the word itself is more important than the meaning behind the word. In total, the most common reason for episodes being deleted was due to guests getting cancelled, and secondly, it was a reason which can easily be guessed. It was for the use of the N word, which occurred mainly in the older episodes. Most surprisingly, inappropriate comments made by guests caused only two episodes to be taken down which comes as a massive shock considering some of the conversations. If you want to continue watching some Joe Rogan conspiracies and find out some of his secrets, click here to watch our complete Joe Rogan iceberg.